guys, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another week, another edition of the Korean StarCraft League, week number 48. I'm a whole show side VIP with me. I'm joined by the people in the chat, by my plushies, and by these amazing players as well. I am finally here. I'm excited to cast the KSO live for the first time in months, by the way. It's been far too long. As I have been traveling in Europe, I have been unable to cast this live. I've been going for replay cast instead, but now we are finally back live with the Korean Star Cup League. Oh, it is good to be back and spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Oceanborn. We have our South Korean Terran player living in the land of Japan. It is Hon Mono. Representing Team Hyper One and spawning in the top left hand corner as I quickly try to sort out the colors here. In the top left hand corner we have a spawner, we have the green Protoss player from the land of the Americas if I'm not mistaken. I believe the Americas, not quite Canada. We have the green Protoss. It is Hapsaya for Slice from Gaming. Let's double check. The Amer ah, there we go, there we go. From the Americas, from the Americas. And here we go, we are diving into our PVT. We do apologize for the late start, uh, but the start was a little bit delayed to begin with, so we need a little bit more time for our players to get together. Exclamation mark B in the chat, if you guys want to have a look at the record yourselves. We have quite a lot of matches that are underway, quite a lot of high quality players, as well as you can imagine. We have players like Dark, Cure, and Classic waiting in the next round. And we have others like Olivera, Nightmare, Cyan, Rebellion, and these two here facing off to face two, try to get luxury of facing off against them in that next round as well. We're missing a couple of players, to be fair, but I do think a big reason for that is just because of how intense these past couple of weeks have been. Uh, just event after event, GSL, WTL, alongside EPT Spring. There's been a lot going on here, and uh, because of that, we're missing some of our regulars. I'm referring specifically about Hero. Hero is not here. Uh, Bjorn is MIA as well, to name a couple. A lot of Zerg players like Shin, like Solo, like Dong Rei Gu. So, uh, yeah, this week is going to be a bit of a lighter uh, turnout here from uh, some players, but we still have the quality. We still have the quality here, still have some key big names to try to vie for that championship to try to vie for that number one spot if you're curious the ksl is no longer a weekly tournament it is a bi-weekly tournament instead every two weeks we do have a korean starcraft league so uh, if you want to support this tournament if you want to help this tournament become a weekly once again you can do so via the patreon patreon is the place to do it do consider it do consider supporting i believe the command is uh, exclamation mark ksl my KSL in the chat. Beautiful. Do love to see it. As we do get a pylon here in the main base, it is going to delay the add ons here of Home Auto. The pylon is going to be going down, and we do manage to get into our 1 1 1 setup. Again, it was, a, it was a more aggressive build here, going for the faster factory into that CC on the low ground. And now we do have an abundance of Helian Reaper, at least in the early game, to be active on the map. Meanwhile, across the map, we do have Hapsaya getting into his own setup here. We have a Stargate, we have Oracle production well underway here for our Protoss player. Oracle, not Phoenixes, not yet. As he's more concerned with getting economic damage done across the map. So Homono, he is going to be threading that natural. Oh, Helian is going to be going down. Don't do that. The Hellion Reapers there. The night entry to the main as well. Good cleanup so far here out of Hopsaya. Gets a Hellion, gets a Reaper, forces it back. Homono does get eyes on that. It's going to say Cyclone. Does get eyes on that Oracle. And as a result, he can make a Cyclone defensively back at home. Oh, but he's going for tank production already. He's going for the Viking. Is it going for the Viking instead? And Hopsaya, after cleaning up a lot of those Reapers and Hellions, he does have quite a force to work with. We do have that tank. And I'd say threaten that mineral line. They get one SCV. Oh. Hey, almost almost get a second. Not quite. There we go. Two SCVs are gonna be going down. At the same time, the Oracle does not go into the main base. I was waiting for the one-two punch. Honestly, the main base was quite vulnerable. But the Oracle did stay back. Oracle was lying back instead. And Homono is gonna be able to. Oh. 
is going to be able to slip in. Oh, the Reaper takes a lot of hits. Does take a lot of hits there. Hellion likewise diving in. We get three probe kills. Pretty good damage. And we get a full scout of the main base. We get confirmation that we are indeed making Phoenixes. And with that, we are going to be pulling the boys. As we usually do here, Homono, he thrives on two base play. It isn't a TVP without Homono pulling the boys at some point here in his games. Workers are being pulled. We do have a massive amount of Phoenixes. Do we have enough to do with the tanks? As oh, we catch an or we catch an Oracle. Oracle goes down. Home on it, pushing towards that base. Does force a cancel, but can we hold on to the natural? Do you have a shield battery? Do you have an immortal? The immortal comes out just in time. The tanks they are within range. Get some tank shots off. The immortal taking a lot of hits. It does take some hole damage, and this Robo it's so exposed it's gonna be going down. The Robo will fall. Phoenixes, they have to try to dive in, but alas, ah, it's too little too late. The Robo is not saved. And now you can see the tank slowly leapfrogging forward. We're now within range of the gateway. Overcharge has been spent. Ah, a bit of a wasted overcharge there. The gateway goes down. Now we try to commit. The Phoenixes can kind of, the tanks. They cannot. They cannot get close. Too many Marines and mules are being thrown down. Ah, oh, the talent true, Bobby, true. As I can get into some of this uh, once the game does wrap up. Honorable, Fabi, honorable. As Home Mono does take game number one. GG. Again, the two base push did snowball out of control. And in the lead up to this game, there were some words thrown around. Again, Hupsaya, he's known for being quite BM. Uh, he is known for his attitude. And uh, he was throwing shade at Home Mono uh, as they were trying to conduct their vetoes. He, there was... There was that was quite a lot. <laughs> it was uh, quite a lot of uh, yeah, of words exchanged between Homono and uh, and Hopsaya. Hup I mean, as to be expected, I don't know if there's anyone that Hopsaya doesn't get on the bad side of. But uh, yeah, yeah, there were some words exchanged, and uh, yeah, Hopsaya, not too happy about the outcome of that game. But now we're getting into game number two. Let's go. The mana, yeah, the mana mules were were very much so intentional there from Homono. Those are curious. Uh, Hopsai was calling Homono a dog eater, and uh, yeah, they were they were exchanging words. Aye, aye, aye. And now we're getting into game number two. Getting into game number two and sporting in the top left hand corner of Golden Aura, we have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Hyper One, leading the series one to zero and is one game off from advancing on into the next round. It is Hon Mono. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have as opponent, we have the American Protoss, the green Protoss player representing Sidestorm Gaming. It is Hup Sire. I'll fix, I'll fix up the names. I'll fix up the names. Homono is the resident Terran ape. True, true. Homono, he is known for being... I mean, I, I always call him the, the biggest cheeser in all of South Korea. True. Not wrong, but not wrong. Homono, he's very aggressive, especially in TVP. Especially in this matchup. It isn't a Homono game if he doesn't go all in in some way. Whether it's a one base all in, a two base all in, proxies, like that is what he is known for. Homono does have a reputation. I think what's impressive is even with that reputation, we've seen Homono take down some top Europeans like Geralt, like Christiana in best of threes and best of fives, even though they know his style. Um, that's what I love about some of our tournaments like Sparkling Tuna Cup is uh, we're able to kind of introduce... Um, multiple regions to each other and they get familiar with each other as well and uh yeah some metagaming can occur as a result as we have seen players adjust here with their approach to Honmono. i'm sure hopsai is quite familiar with him as well i know he's a very active player on the na region on the na ladder i think s2c needs something like this though i think like this is the key word there um i think people always like um like a quote-unquote villain but there's like a difference right like like peak dark for example like peak dark is um he wasn't necessarily disrespectful like he wouldn't like i don't know 
like curse at, at people or curse at players or anything like that. But if you remember, uh, especially like Heart of the Swarm into early uh, Legacy of the Void, Dark was very cocky. Uh, Dark was very, um, very confident and he would... Uh, he would say things like, you know, he wasn't afraid of any like foreign players or stuff like that, right? It's like, like that's the kind of stuff that he would he would say, and, and he'd have like the skills to back it up as well, you know. And there'd be like there'd be like that kind of rivalry going on, right? It's like, can, you know, can any of the foreigners ever like bring Dark down and stuff like that? Like that that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Dream was very similar. I remember I don't know what it was about the some of the SKT players, but Dream was very similar. Was also very confident. Um, I remember he would have a uh, he would say things like that in the GSL group selection In the GSL group selection, you know talking about like again talking about like confidence and and things of that nature Then you have more of the extreme though people like Kapsaya or like uh, Idra would be there as well He was on on the line if not over the line, right? I think Dark was more of the more along, along the lines of MC. If you remember MC, where MC would also like talk trash, um, but also in a certain way, right? But here we go. We just see Homeowner opening up Reaper Hellion. Does open up Reaper Hellion. It's gonna be able to shut down the Adepts as well. Ooh, breaking into the mineral lines here. We have a Phoenix to defend. What can it really do? Look at the Phoenix really do. The boys are being pulled. Probes are going down. They're lining up. No. They're lining up. Five, five six probes going to be going down. Seven workers go down. And here, this time against the same opener, against the same build, Hopside did not go for the Oracle. He unfortunately was caught out outside of his natural base. Reapers are falling. Sorry, Adepts are falling. And probes have gone down. Oh, that's quite a lot of damage dealt here to Hopsire. Can he recover? Can he counterattack? I mean, he does have Phoenix's head for the main base. What do we have to defend? We have one Viking, no Cyclone. Uh, this is the same build, by the way, from Home Mono. Two games in a row. Once again, going for early tank production. Once again, only one Viking. We're skipping Cyclones. And I imagine we're going for another two base push. I imagine this is going to be the same kind of overall goal here for Home Mono. Two games in a row. Uh, we'll see if that's the case. We'll see if he does pull the boys again. We'll see if Hapsaya can hold. The problem this time is that Hapsaya has had a much rougher start to the game. Losing a lot of workers already. He has retained his Phoenix count at least. That is true. It's going to be on Hapsai here to try to slow down the army. Pick up a tank if at all possible. Get some SCVs. He does get a mule. Does manage to get a mule here. And there we go. The boys are being pulled. It is the same build. Two games in a row here by Homono. Doesn't feel like he has to adjust. And this time he may be able to snowball out of control. Last game was able to catch an Oracle immediately with this push. We are picking up reinforcements. Good moves here by Hubsaya. But the main army can it be dealt with? Back in we have two shield batteries, we have an overcharge. This is our gateway army. We have one Adept, we have one Zella. This time there is no Robo, there's no Immortal. Gateways are just now finishing. We need to warp in. Ah, and alas, we are caught with our pants down a little bit here. Overcharge is popped. Zella goes down. We have plenty of Marines, plenty of anti-air. Shield battery is going to fall. And Hopsai doesn't have a lot of supply to work with either. Yeah, he's about to be supply blocked. The supply block is real. We throw down the Manor CC. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Does throw it down. We clean up the ground army. Pieces, they're doing what they can. GG gets pulled. And Honmono will take the series 2-0. GG, well played. GG, again, the same build two games in a row, and Hubside did have different approaches, to be fair, but uh, to lose so many workers that early on was brutal. Was brutal, and with that, Homono will take the 2 0, will advance on into the next round. Just, just pull the boys, Papi, just pull the boys. <laughs> oh. And with that, we are going to be getting ready here for our next series. We can actually have a look at the bracket. Let's go. Uh, exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the bracket yourselves. As we just report some scores. And just update some of the score lines here. Okay, from the top, we do have Dark. Dark waiting in the second round, and now he has an opponent. Dark is going to be going up against Rebellion, the Korean Protoss player, in a best of three. 
in the round of eight. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have Oliveira versus Sheep. Um, Oliveira is in game. Sheep is nowhere to be found. Um, walkovers are soon to be thrown out. Um, so, oh wait, no, I see him. <laughs> Never mind. Sheep is Lemon, and Lemon has arrived. Oliveira versus Lemon, I believe, is about to begin. Is about to begin. So that is a series we could jump into. Scrolling down, we have Nightmare versus Serica, which uh, is currently underway. Currently mid-series. I'm unfamiliar with Serica. Don't really know them as a player, but... See how well they can perform. Scrolling down, we have the series that we just wrapped up. Homono Hitu is upside. He's up against Cure in the second round in a TVT, which is ready for us. We could jump into that as well. And scrolling down towards the bottom, we have Cyan versus Poriforian. Winner goes up against Classic. So we have our series set up. So we have an option. We could either go Lemon versus Oliveira or Homono versus Cure. We should follow. I feel like we should just follow Homeowner here. It does make sense, like when it comes to the story that we're telling, the, the players that we're following overall. Yeah, Homeowner versus Curie is going to be up next. Oliveira versus Lemon looks like a lot of fun, and it does lead us into Nightmare most likely, which would be a really juicy series, but it makes sense for us to follow Homeowner here. Into Cure. Cure, of course, being the highest rated Terran in the entire tournament. Uh, Cure, I would I mean, the two Terrans are facing off here, and we'll see which one will make it into those semifinals. Oliveira is no slouch either, but uh, currently I think I would rate Cure a little bit higher. Regardless, we do at least have a strong Terran player both in the upper half and the lower half of the bracket. I mentioned before that we're missing some Zergs. There is Dark, of course, the best Zerg, the best Zerg player in all of South Korea, but we're lacking Solar, Shin, DRG. It, it is going to be Dark waving that Zerg banner um, on his own there in the upper half of the bracket. And I'm hoping he can go far just for some variety here in these matches. And uh, we'll see how far he can make it. Meanwhile, we're setting up here for our teams. We're setting up our players. Bam, there we go. We have our second best of three of the night. You see it here before you. It is going to be a TVT between Cure and Homono. Now, Homono, he is the cheesiest Terran player at all of South Korea. That is very applicable to how he approaches Protoss. But TVT is a matchup where Homono plays a lot more standard. Now, he is totally willing to proxy. Gu guaranteed, we're going to be seeing a proxy of some kind. I mean, I don't, know. I don't know if I want to go that far. But it is not uncommon for Homono to proxy uh, in Terran versus Terran. But outside of that, we could see a more standard straight up game. He does have that within him. We'll see. We'll see as Vitas are done and we're getting into game number one. Going to be taking place on site Delta. Oh boy. You can hear the beeps. We're getting in. We are getting in. And again, I hope everyone has been enjoying themselves. I hope everyone has a great weekend as well. What a great way to start off a Saturday. Um, I mean, it's halfway through Saturday already here. But a great way to kick off the weekend nonetheless. Today is going to be a pretty big day here for the Cranky Ducklings. We have not just this tournament, but we also have Sea Duckling Open in a couple of hours. Followed by WTL at the end of the night. So three broadcasts here tonight. Back to back to back. It's going to be an intense weekend as it always is, as it usually is. And here we go. We're diving into our next series. In the bottom right hand corner, we have a cure for Team Liquid. South Korean Terran player. I'm so used to going for the WTL intros. I have to, to stop myself. Sporting in the top left hand corner, we have the South Korean Terran player living the land of Japan. The Red Terran representing Team Hyper One. It is Hon Mono. And speaking of proxies, here we go. SMEs are being sent out across the map, and I believe we're going for a proxy Raxus in the natural of Cure. We're going to be hugging the edge of the natural base here, hoping to just suck it in, to just hug the edge and be avoided, be kept hidden here by the likes of Cure. Here we go. We are committed. Proxy 2 Rax Reaper here from Home Mono is going to be rallying Reapers into the main base. Cure is going for a double gas opener, though. Double gas is going to be leading into a faster factory, leading into faster Hellion production. Cure, he will have the tools to defend, but it's all about the execution, all about the micro. It's going to come down to the control here of our players. Who is going to be favored, or who's going to be able to take the edge off the, off the other, have an edge over the other? 
Reapers on the way. Likewise, will Kira have the wherewithal to scout and actually check this location? Oh, we're going for the bunker. We're going Marine. My apologies here. Okay, we're not going proxy. Wait, what? We're not going proxy Reaper. We're going Turax Marine and said containing cure. Very interesting. Okay. Show us what you got. We are taking gas behind this here to transition. Marines are going to be poking in. Bunker is going to finish. Boys are being pulled. Ikiri does pull the boys. Does a buffer here for his Reaper. We do manage to get one SCV. We got one so far. Lolo's mine time. Second SCV goes down as well. So far, good control here at a home auto. Doesn't lose a Marine, but they are getting low. As we're getting even more SCVs, four workers go down. For a handful of Marines, though. As home auto forces his way up the ramp. Gets on top of the bunker. It does not finish. And Home Auto doesn't even need that bunker, not yet at least. He's getting so much ground. He's getting quite a lot done. Ooh, gets the Reaper as well. But the bunker does complete. Cure, he has control of his main base. Home Auto stuck outside. And there's that transition. We have a second gas geyser and a factory on the way. Okay, where do we go from here? So we have two Marines to just hold on to that bunker. We're getting into Reapers behind this, which can, of course, bypass this bunker, get into the mineral line. We're going for some SCV damage, but I believe this Cyclone is going to come out just in time to keep up with the Reapers. I believe. Back at home, we're getting to our own Cyclone production. No tech lab for tanks. No starport either. Cyclone has been able to pop out. Reapers, they get into the mineral line. They get one. They get one SCV, they get a second worker, and we do ooh, not get a... Oh, wait, we do get a third as well. Whew. That was a clutch KDA charge. Three ACVs go down. Not like this. It's going to be eight worker kills in total, just like that. Home Auto does take a worker lead. He's going for a CC in the main base. His command center, fun fact, is faster than that of Cure, as Cure went for a 1-1-1 instead. So the turns are about to table. Homeowner was the aggressor, but now Cure is going to be the aggressor instead. With the arrival of this medevac, we're going for a drop across the map. And there it is. Cyclones, they're moving out. And does Homeowner have enough to defend? Oh, he misses the Cyclones. Uh-oh. Homeowner, what do we have at home? We have one Cyclone to defend as opposed to the two that we would have had. So Homeowner out of position. We're boosting on out. Second Cyclone and Viking are on the way, but they're not done yet. And Cure, he's here. Cure has arrived. We're going for the main base. We catch the Cyclone. It's going to go down. We're keeping the production as well. We can see Homeowner racing back home, but it's too little too late. Boys are being pulled. Workers are falling. We got five SCVs. We get another Cyclone as well. Very nice control here out of Cure. The juggling a little bit too good. It looks like he's finally going to get cleaned up, but no, I spoke too soon. Gets eight SCVs, busts into the mineral line. He scouts the second starport. Big moment there for Cure. As he does see the two the two port, two base all in. And we're pushing. Curry keeps on pushing. And what do we have left? One cyclone. We're getting into a tech lab, getting into tank production. Curie's just not stopping, not slowing down. See Homeowner making two Vikings at a time, trying to catch up, trying to gain map control, trying to get, gain air control. But he needs time. The bunker is not done. It is going to be denied. Do force to cancel. Commence it to zone away. Behind this, Kira is getting his own CC on location. The tank has arrived, so Homeowner, he at least holds onto his main. But he is being contained. That's the goal here for Kira is to contain Homono to delay this expansion for as long as we can. So let's lay the expansion behind this. We go for a scan. We get eyes on the CC that has completed. 
And we are main adding over. Looking at the workers, Cure, he does have the economic lead, does have the high worker counts. Natural based timings are lined up, or synced up. And when it comes to the main armies, we have a Viking lead for Cure, we have a tank lead, we have a marine lead. Cure, he's ahead in every aspect so far. Despite the double star port, we don't have any add ons. So, Hot Mono, he's actually got an even Viking count, if not slightly behind Viking count here, to cure. Vikings are being active. Cure. Uh, just setting up a trap here in the center of the map. For any stray units. And Vikings, they are spotted. And Curie's going for it. Oh, the Vikings, they are staggered. We get one, we get two. Massive catch here from Cure. The Viking count, they were quite similar. They were so close. But now Curie takes a massive Viking lead, and now we're pushing. Now that we have air control, we have control of the tanks, we have control of the game. We have high ground. Homono does snipe a Viking. Cure though, within range of the bunker. And a tank as well! That tank goes down, bunker as well. The pig off by Cure, you can see him just bullying the Vikings back here from Homono. Now Homono, he's getting into his own reactor. Looking to take a Viking lead. Trying to at least. Uh, Curie's still up three Vikings. Behind this, third CC on location. Cure, he's containing his opponent to two bases, getting further ahead in the economy. Behind this, Homono trying to play mech. We're going for an armory. See Homono rotating around. I mean, again, he knows that he can't fight the Viking Seer of Cure, and the Liberator has arrived! We have freedom, we have the Liberation Zone. Homono just sending it across the map. Trying to get some damage done. But it's only a matter of time as Cure is getting closer and closer, deeper and deeper into the natural of Homono. Ooh, gets a tank. See, so he's trying to drag the Marines, and the Marines, though! What do we do on Siege? Do you foresee on Siege Vikings? They do land. And that's going to be a kill on the natural. At the same time, across the map, Homono, he does land at the natural base of Cure. Killing workers, killing workers, killing SCVs. Pushing into the main base. Cure trying to force his way in. The tank volleys are pretty huge. But Cure, he has far too much. He's overwhelming. Oh, there's one tank left. It's close. He does get the tank. He breaks in. And he's came to the production. At the same time, Homono doing the same across the map. But alas, we still have a standing army. Cure, he's holding. And Homono, he's completely all in. Is all in across the map, getting more SCVs. Going for the command center. But remember, Cure, he has another mining base. The actual doesn't matter. And Cure, he's cleaning up these Vikings. One after the run another, they're going down. And Homono does not have enough. GG gets called and Cure takes game number one. GG. And that was an interesting game out of Homeowner. A very interesting build going two racks, proxy two racks into Marine. Uh, followed by followed by the Reapers instead. Very unusual, very unorthodox. But honestly, it wasn't a bad start. Um, it wasn't a bad start. For Hon Mono, where he was able to successfully trade, kill additional workers, take an economic lead. The problem was that, unfortunately, because he rallied his first Cyclone across the map, he only had one Cyclone at home to defend, and Cure, he just had his way with Hon Mono. We saw some killer control there, some killer uh, medevac drop micro with those Cyclones. Cure just overwhelmed Hon Mono, took a massive lead himself. Was able to recover. Was able to recover and surpass Homono. Very well done. Solid game there at a cure. And now we're getting into game number two. Here we go. 
Uh, Lad, are you casting any ESL games this season? Um, I'm not a part of EPT Spring, if that's what you're asking. Um, I believe that's being covered by the other uh, community casters out there. I think Wardy, Zombie Grub, uh, Setfast, BMO, um, all the others. We did inquire about um, a side stream, about a B stream, but from my understanding, there is no side stream uh, for EPT Spring. There is no B stream. Uh, so unfortunately, we won't be a part of the uh, of I am of ESL Masters Spring. At least not for the regionals. Uh, we were told that maybe we might be a part of the Dream Act Dallas main event. As in, for that event, there are going to be like a C stream, a D stream, a B stream, that sort of thing. So we're going to be a part of that at least. Uh, but when it comes to the online regionals, um, unfortunately, there is no B stream there. So uh, feels bad, man. But regardless, we're getting into. Our next set of games and spawning in the top left hand corner of Goldenora, we have the South Korean Terran player, the blue Terran representing Team Liquid leading the series one to zero. It is Cure. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have as a player, we have the South Korean Terran player, the red Terran representing Team Hyper One, leaving the land of Japan down to the series. Luna bounce back. It is Hon Mono. That Cure slash Gibby or Mass Liberator, Mass Thor game lives rent free in my head. Those two have a different level of TVT. They're pretty insane. You're not wrong. They're pretty insane. Uh, arguably, Cure and Gibby, do they have the best TVT in Korea? Mm. Arguably. It's hard to say. Like, there's just so much of variety in TVT in Korea. Right, you have Gumiho who more than often embraces mech. You have Byun who plays a mass bio style, very very light on tanks, very light on Vikings, mass marine. Um, we have Maru who does like incorporate the best of both worlds, and he's really he's quite flexible in his own style. We have Cure who up until recently was very very much so a mass cyclone kind of player. That was up until the most recent patch. That's, that's, that's a lot of good TVT. <laughs> it's a lot of good, a lot of good TVT. And then, of course, you have Ryung, right? Ryung, arguably the best TVT in the world. The Clem Sniper himself. That's that's some TVTs that I'm not going to forget. Uh, if you're curious, I'm referring to World Team League last season. WTL went, this was post DreamHack Atlanta when Clem was on fire. People were making arguments that maybe Clem was the best player in the world. Like, he could not be stopped. He was a beast. And uh, in WTL, Maru couldn't stop him. Solar couldn't stop him. Who could? Ryung could. Ryung, he was able to bring Clem down multiple times in WTL. It was crazy. <laughs> he's uh, he's Clem's kryptonite, apparently. Good times, good times. But yeah, I think, um, I think what made that WTL season perfect is that, again, Ryung showed that, like, he he's worth being on Team Vitality or on Onside, on Onside, to be on alongside Maru and Solar. Like, he played his part, definitely, uh, in those finals. Good times. As we do have Home Mono, uh, I was going to say proxying his factory, but it gets scattered immediately. It is going to be spotted. Do you see Homono opening up double gas and going a reactor Reaper Hellion? So it is going Reaper Hellion. And with that, he's going to be looking to bust into the natural base. So the goal here for Homono is to get into the mineral line and to roast up some workers if he does make a pass of Cyclone. That's the big difference here. Here he does have defensive Cyclones, does have a tank on the way. We'll see if Homono can break in. It is going to be five Reapers and three Hellions. He's headed for that natural base. Headed for that mineral line. He's going to try to get some SCVs. We do have the high ground. One Reaper goes down. We get the Hellion as well. So far, good defense by Cure. Again, very carefully pushing forward, not overcommitting. And Home Mono is forced back. He gets three SCVs, and he was hoping for much more. As Cure now has a tank lead. The tank has arrived. We can see Cure rotating over towards the ramp because Homono, he can't threaten that ramp. Or, sorry, he can threaten the cliff face with his Reapers. Can try to jump in. Cure is aware of that, and Cure is ready. So Homono rotates around, and he's going to run into the tank. Yeah, tank volley going to be going off. We force Homono back. 
Behind this, we're getting into our 1-1-1. Getting into Viking production. Interesting, so homeowner, he will have the Viking lead. He's making two at a time. Meanwhile, Q is going for a Raven initially instead. So Q will have a lot more utility. Meanwhile, homeowner will have a lot more zoning potential with his Vikings. And we'll see if he doubles down and goes for a second starport again. Speaking of, Kira does slip in, he gets a full scout, does confirm nothing quite hidden in the main base. Good control at home motor, he does save his workers. Doesn't lose an SCV. And yeah, Kira, he sees everything. With that, he feels pretty safe to throw down his third CC and work towards his third base. So Mono, he's trying to hunt down that Reaper. He's looking for it. He is trying to hunt it down. And here we go. We're pushing out across the map. A couple of boys are being pulled as well. Oh, Mono, he's committed. Ooh, the Reapers go down. They did face check. We have three Ravens. That's a lot of disabled potential. That's a lot of auto turrets. Again, it's all about whether or not Homeowner can zone those Ravens away. And even snipe them as he's pushing in. Behind this, third CC on location. Homeowner, he's not all in. Tanks are ready. Homeowner slowly pushing forward. Does get within range. And oh, does not get the tank. Barely doesn't. Homeowner, he threatens the main base. Cancels the bunker. Neither player sees yet to do scan each other. Homeowner, he is getting his third base. It's on the way. Likewise, though, Cure, his third is already in orbital and it's being landed at the linear third location. Is going to be taken. Looking at our unit count here, we up to eight Vikings. We have a Liberator. Homeowner, he can try to bully Cure back. Has a lot of potential with that Lib. Does go up. See the Ravens trying to skirt around. They do take a couple of hits. They're getting low. You have to be careful. Oh. You have to be careful as the third base is getting up and running. Homeowner, his own as well. Still behind that of Cure. Still not an orbital. Yes, Cure was able to keep up, was able to zone Homeowner away. Homeowner, he actually didn't pick anything off. Remember, he didn't get any tanks. One Marine went down, and Cure, he's able to maintain his economic lead, and that is translated out now in the armies. Look at the supply here. We have seven tanks to five. We have the Ravens as well, which can render tanks inert with their interference matrix. We have a massive Marine lead as well. This is going to be an uphill battle for Honmono. Again, just too much of a deficit after the openers. Honmono, he committed so much to the Reaper Hellion, and it wasn't worth it. Reapers get cleaned up. The mass Viking has potential. Oh, the Raven. We get one. We get two. Very nicely done. There's one Raven left. And they they have not been worth it. We get the Metamax as well. Very nice pickups here by Home Mono. But the ground army is still in favor of Cure. This is best case scenario for Hon Mono, and it's still going to be close as we go. We pick up, we go for the drop into the main. Vikings a little bit too slow, not in position. And the Marines, they're getting a lot done. They force the Vikings to land. Boys are being pulled, and so many SEVs going to be going down. We get 16, 17, 19. Almost 20. Very well worth it, and here we go. That one Raven does get some disables off. We're pushing on forward. Liberator goes down. Not the most efficient trade here out of Cure, but he breaks through nonetheless. GG gets called. Homono gets pulled apart, and Cure takes the series 2-0. to zero. GG. GG, well, play, well played. Cure does take it 2-0, to zero, does advance on into the semifinals. 
in a very impressive way there. I mean, Homeowner, he had his own moments, right? Like, he was able to pick up some medivacs, pick up some ravens. I love that despite that, we still haven't had enough medivacs to drop into the main base to drag away all of those Vikings, to pull them out of position, which allowed that one sole raven to actually come into play, disable as many tanks as possible, and break the third base. Very well done, very well executed there by Cure. GG. GG, well played. With that, Cure will advance on. Homeowner is eliminated from the tournament. GG. And with that, we have some catching up to do. What is going on? Where is our tournament at? Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the bracket yourselves. We have uh, quite a lot of updates to catch up on. As a... Uh... I just updates our lovely admins as well. Here we go. From the top, Dark is still mid-series against Rebellion. They're still in a best of three. Still ongoing, I believe. Yep, yep, they're still ongoing. Uh, meanwhile, scrolling down, we have Oliveira versus Lemon. For those that are curious, Sheep is Lemon, the Taiwanese Protoss player. They're currently mid-series, currently facing off. Um, they did arrive late, which is why their series started later than normal, which is why that series is still ongoing. Um, that does mean that the upper half of the bracket is going to be delayed. It is going to be a little bit delayed there. Um, but thankfully, Oliveira and Lemon did both arrive, and they're playing it out. Uh, meanwhile, we have Nightmare taking down Setikas 2-0. Nightmare is waiting for the winner of Oliveira and Lemon. In the round of eight. Scrolling down, we have, of course, our series is just wrapped up. Cure advances onto the semifinals, and he's waiting for his next opponent, either Classic or Cyan. Now, Classic is going to be favored in that series, but Cyan has been popping off. And let me just double check. Um, I think it was in ESL Open Cup Asia this week. Cyan took down. Did he take down Classic? Is that what happened? I'm just double checking here. But uh, there was a big upset, and Cyan popped off this week already. Taking down a big name. And uh, it was Rogue. That's it. That's it. Cyan. Okay, so it was this week's ESL Open Cup Asia. I recommend checking out the VODs. Definitely. It was a great week of StarCraft. A great day of StarCraft. Rogue went up against Classic in the first round. And uh, Rogue took down Classic 2-1. to one. For those who are... Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. For those who don't know, Rogue is back. Rogue, he's completed his military service, and he's been competing for the past three weeks, I think. it's I think it's been it's been just under a month, uh, but Rogue has been back competing in online events. And um, in less than a month, Rogue has gotten to the point where he's beating Classic, which is very impressive. This week, Rogue did beat him in a best of three, went all the way to the ace match, and there was some late game there as well. There, there was a lot of late game between them. Rogue took down Classic. That was a big moment for Rogue. And then Rogue went on to the round of 16 to face off against Cyan, and Cyan to Ode Rogue. Cyan, he popped off, and, and I remember being very surprised there. I know that Cyan is a really good player, and Cyan has taken down some big names before, but to take down Rogue just after, just after Rogue took down Classic was very impressive, and yeah, just goes to show these, uh, a lot of these Chinese Protoss players, whether they're Cyan, Jeshi, Firefly, can never count them out. They, um, they're more regularly taking down Korean players, which is really impressive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they're favored yet, but um, it is not uncommon to see them take maps or take series here and there. Again, some big names like Byun, like Rogue, like Dark, does happen uh, more frequently nowadays. Is it really cool to see them all level up? I think an example of that, I'm just, I'm just checking. Like Saiyan recently took down Hero as well. Just for some context. And, uh, yeah, with that, again, Cyan, he's up against a Classic in that PvP. I mean, hey, if you can beat Hero, Classic is definitely within reach as well. So, I uh, wish them both the best of luck. Again, coming into it, Classic is still going to be favored. But, uh, Cyan, I'm sure, is going to put up a fight. And that is going to be all of our matches right now. And we're going to be waiting for our next series... Um, I believe Steadfast and Chicken Man are casting Oliveira versus Lemon. Um, I believe they're in that series. But uh, yeah, if you want to check out some of the other streams out there, 
it isn't just that fast, it isn't just uh, Chicken Man, there's also Dave Tessa. Dave Tessa is also casting in English, and uh, there is also Enki casting in Spanish as well. So plenty of coverage going on. I'm just checking, Dave is currently in game number one between Classic and Cyan. Oh, yo, and they're in the late game. Well, oh, they're getting towards the late game here. Five base versus five base, let's go. Really cool to see. As uh, the game may soon be coming to an end. Um, but because Lemon and Oliveira are still mid-series, and because it looks like there's going to be some delays in the upper half of the bracket, we may just focus on the lower half. We will most likely try to jump into Classic versus Cyan mid-series. That will lead into Cure. And then by the time that lower semifinals finishes, the upper semifinals should be starting. So because of the delays, we should be able to cast both semifinals today. Unless there's some like really fast and really long games that like slow things and speed things up. That's possible. But uh, that's going to be the plan. The plan here tonight is to follow the lower half of the bracket. Then we'll go to the upper half. Uh, that's our plan here, at least, on the Cranky Ducklings. Just as a heads up. Rogue is insane. He is insane. Ryung is one of those players all the players, res all the pros respect a great deal. It's easy to see why. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, he even coaches Maru, right? Like, Ryung, he does give a lot of, like, uh, advice and gives a lot of, um, a lot of sage wisdom to Maru whenever he can. Does a Kirk fight often. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's one of those veterans that can still keep up with the best of them, despite, uh, despite, you know, competing for so long, despite the military service concluding. It's really cool. Really cool to see. Big Ryung fan. Big fan of Ryung. As we're now getting into our next series. Oh. Oh my god, and this is what I spoke about, by the way. I was hyping up Cyan earlier, talking about how he took down Rogue, how he took down Hero. And fun fact, we're jumping into game number two. We're diving in mid-series here, and Cyan is up 1-0 against Classic. Let's go, Poppy. Let's go. Again, these score lines, these, re these results, they've been, they've been becoming more and more prevalent, more frequent here. Again, Cyan, Firefly, Jeshi, they've all been improving so much. And here we go. We're jumping into game number two and spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Goldenora. We have the South Korean Protoss player, the Red Protoss, representing Twisted Minds. Down in this series, 1-0. to zero. Can he bounce back? It is classic. And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have... The Chinese Protoss player himself, the Blue Protoss, representing Mystery Gaming. It is Cyan. Leading the series 1-0, one, one game away from advancing on into the semi-finals. Let's go. Let us go. But yeah, it's one of those things, especially post Oliveira becoming the world champion, um, it did kind of light a fire under a lot of the Chinese players, and they've all been improving over the past couple of years. They've all been getting better and better. It's been amazing to see. The motivation was real, and now we find ourselves in a really interesting situation here. <laughs> Cyan is looking to bring down his opponent. We'll see if he can. We'll see what kind of openers we go for. Uh, game one, we didn't get to cast it, but it was on Alkyonet. It was on Alkyonet. It was a very long game. It was five base versus five base. Maxed out armies. But here on a smaller map like Golden Aura, I expect a shorter game. I expect a much shorter game instead. So we have a two uh, double gate opener here from Classic. Two gate opener by Cyan as well. And with this, we're waiting for our side because oh my apologies, sorry, it was a two gate opener out of Cyan. It was a gate expand out of Classic. Oh my god. Okay, sorry, my brain was on autopilot there. 
just making an assumption. So Classic is being very greedy. Very greedy here from our Red Protoss player. And Cyan, he does scout, he does confirm. And it's, now the pressure is on the Blue Protoss to punish this. The pressure is on Classic opening up Sentry. With Sentries, of course, they were recently buffed in PvP. They take less damage, they deal more. We're going to be able to hold on to our two base setup shield batteries on the way. And the power of a sentry based opener as well is the power of the Hoos Nation to scout across the map to confirm whether or not your opponent is going for an all in. We'll see if Classic can piece this together. I mean, we'll see what comes next, I should say. As Cyan is moving out with some Stalkers. Probe is moving out towards the bottom left. Interesting. We're headed for the gold. And do we plan to take it for ourselves? Okay, no, no, he's checking. Okay, he's just checking the goal base. Making sure it was not taken. Loose Nation gets in. We do get eyes on the Twilight Council. It's going to be Blink from Cyan. And you can see Cyan try to trade here with these sentries. But as a reminder, sentries, at least in PvP, they no longer tickle. Now they can hit quite hard. And they have to be respected. See Cyan going for the proxy pylon. Now, with the Twilight Council finishing, is this going to be a proxy Dark Shrine? Are we going for the Dark Shrine? Are we going for the Nexus itself? We have the money for it. We're going for the... We're going for Ninja Base. There it is. There's the Nexus. Let's go. Okay, Cyan double expanding. How do we approach an, a greedy economic opener? We surpass that greed. We just double down. We go for the gold instead. We'll see if Cyan can get away with it. For those that are curious, a big reason why he's doing this is because of Classic's build, because of his own gate expand. Classic does have an economic lead. Cyan has to try to bounce back. Adepts are moving out. Back at home, Blink is on the way. Blink is slightly faster for Cyan. As he had the faster Twilight Council. Boost Nation Scout confirms no additional gateways. It's only two gateways here from Classic. Cyan should be feeling pretty safe. And Classic is looking to expand. But again, Cyan has a faster third, and he has the gold. Has the gold alongside it. And Classic still has not checked. He still has no idea. I mean, there's no reason to. Third gate's on the way, Robo as well. Loose Nation Scout is denied. Classic just now getting into his own third. And if this game goes on any longer, then Cyan will have the advantage. Does recall here to the goal base. It's fully saturated. Is up and running. And it is paying for itself. See Classic continually just checking the main base. Trying to get a read on the tech. Now, this is, this is a little bit sus. Cyan hasn't thrown down a triangular third. He hasn't thrown down a linear third base. A classic should be checking. And he does. There we go. He does check both third base locations. He sees no third. He also sees no gateway explosion. That is suspect. And there we go. He checks bottom left. Realizing that you have to have something somewhere. So he did piece it together. Probes are going down. Ooh, this is a lot of damage. Five workers do fall. Classic now aware of what's going on. Does punish it. And Cyan, can he hold on to that goal base? Bling is done for both players. Cyan does have a Stalker lead, but Classic has Immortals. Not just Immortals, that is a second robot on the way, and everyone XP Bay as well by getting into Disruptors. Classic tech-wise, he is just surpassing Cyan. He's on a timer. Good Blinks. Do avoid the trap. Do avoid the army. Big gateway explosion behind this as well from Classic. He's happily mining from his three base setup, and Cyan does feel like he's one step behind here. Again, no bay, no immortal production of his own. It's Cyan he's working with purely a gateway army. Classic is taking up into so much more. 
not going for disruptors, going for a Colossus. Very interesting. Okay. Now, the power of a Colossus in PvP is that it is consistent splash damage. It is a good supportive unit. Isn't as bombastic as disruptors, sure, true, but it does have its place. It's very unorthodox. There are very few players that go into Colossi like this. We've seen Astraea do it. We've seen Skillus fall in love with it as well. Ooh, as we get eight probes across the map. Oh, Stalker's a blink into the main base as well. More workers are falling. Cyan, he's not ready for this. He wants to commit, but the last is being pulled apart. Forced to work in back at home. 14 probes go down. Oh my god, this is becoming too much. And we go for the recall. At the same time, Prism into the main. Army's rotating over. The classic is now, sorry, the pressure is now on Cyan. And he does try to catch some of these units, does try to catch some army. Does get a couple of gateways. He's going for the Robos. Both Robos are gonna be going down. Good pick up here by Cyan. Colossi are revealed. He doesn't get economic damage done. Not yet. There we go. Now he is. Probes are falling. Good force fields as well. He gets seven probes. Gets the hell out of there. At the same time, Sand goes for a big warp into the main. And Classic is out of position. Pylons are going down. Robots are being denied. So we're busting into that mineral line. Nice hole position, Micro. Oh, Zealous. Yeah, they were on A move there. On that pylon. We do bust into the main base store because they come in as well. They focus down that Colossus. And Cyan, has he done it? Has he barely pulled it through? Game is he powered. And the Immortals are having a hard time engaging here. The choke point working against Classic. We have the better concave. With Classic, he breaks on through. Zealots are pushing in. Cyan trading very nicely here. We're running out of Zealots. We're running out of steam. Cyan, he's gonna get the hell out of here. Force to recall. Well, that was a surprising amount of damage. Getting 21 probes. He killed both Robos. He also killed the backup Robos as well. So, zero. Oh, never mind. They were rebuilt here at the natural instead. Colossi on the way once again. But he did so well. I'm a little bit in shock. Like, just how much Cyan had pulled off there. And now he's reinforcing. He's going once again. We still have that prism threading the main base. Cyan, he's ready for the one-two punch. Likewise, this time Classic is ready for the prism. Colossi are about to come out. They are about to pop. And just in time... Cyan is trying to go for the kill. He's up 20 workers. He doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. He's working his way through those zealots. Trying to get on top of the Colossi as well, but the Archons are going down. Oh, yeah. We've run out of our buffer. We have to back off. At the same time, Prism does get in. Somehow, someway, we deny plus two. And plus two is denied. That's a kill on the forge. Cyan should be cleaned up. He's got a couple more zealots, but there's not much he can do here. And Sian, he's taking another base. He's taking a fifth. Personally, I would love to see Robos. I'd love to see a second Robo in a bay. I'd love to see Sian use his economy to just tech. Right now, he's sticking with a gateway army instead, which is risky. He's just sticking with purely gateway units. Zealots and stalkers. Like, the way that Sign is playing right now is he wants to kill Classic. He's going for the kill. He wants to overwhelm. The problem here is that if Classic holds, then he's going to surpass and he's going to snowball out of control. Because of the superior army. Because of his composition, you can see now he's getting to two more Colossi. Prism into the main. Prism does get picked off. Like, Sian's playing playing pretty all in like pretty committed like i understand that he's gone he's got 70 probes that's true but he has no tech he has no transition not yet and the longer this goes on the better it's going to be for classic 
As now we're up to four Colossi, we're getting into Archons, soon to be more Immortals. Sign is taking another Nexus. Which is all well and good. And to be fair, I want to favor Cyan if Classic pushes, but trying to break this entrenched position, like, that's going to be so difficult. You can see Cyan trying to bait the army out into the open. Does have a surround set up as well. But I don't think Cyan has enough to surround. He blinks into the main. Goes to the main base instead. Avoids the army. Zelsa rotate over towards the third base. Cyan out position classic once again. Go for the Archosis Pylon. Doesn't quite get it. Yeah, he wants a Colossi instead. Going for the dive. Gets one. Oh, doesn't quite get the second. Zelsa coming from behind. Let's go. Gets the second Colossus. Cyan pulling him apart. At the same time, classic tries to apply pressure at the gold base. He's denied. And now we're going for the pylons. And Cyan, he has done it, by the way. Classic pushing on out. And this doesn't matter. Even if he kills the goal base, it doesn't matter. Not anymore. Cyan, he has such a good economy behind this. He has so many workers, so many bases. Takes control of the main. And Cyan, he's doing it again. He's going to be claiming the 2-0. We force a recall, but this army is not big enough. Not anymore. Let's go, Poppy. Let's go. Results are being cleaned up. We lose 14 probes, and here comes the rest of the army from Cyan, headed for the third base. We're down to two Colossi, two Immortals. I was concerned. I was concerned that um that Cyan wouldn't be able to pull Classic apart and get into the bases again. I didn't believe, but I should have. I should have believed, Fabi. Oh my god! Just pulling Classic this way and that. Collapsing on the main army. Zealots, they're getting annihilated by the Archons, though. Ah, but Cyan, he's got Archons of his own. Getting on top of the Immortals. Reinforcing. GG gets called, and Cyan will take the series 2-0. to zero. GG. Let's go. <laughs> GG. Very well done. Very well played here. Cyan, he pops off. He takes down Classic 2-0 to zero. again. In recent weeks, Cyan has been taking down Rogue, taking down Classic, taking down Hero as well. I still don't want to say, like, coming into these series, Cyan is the favorite player, but he pops off, right? Like, when Cyan is in form, when he's hot, Bobby, he's scolding hot, you know? He's, he's able to bring down the best of the best. Very well done. GG. Well played. And with that, Cyan advances on to face off against Cure in the semifinals. Let's go. And just like this series, I want to say that Cure, I want to say that Cure is the favorite player, 100%. Cure is coming in as a favorite player, but Cyan, he can cause upsets. We'll see if he can do it again. See if he can pull it off again here. As we're setting up for our next series, we're setting up for our first semi-finals. Let's go. Cure versus Cyan. Here we go. Uh, meanwhile, if you're in the chat, because we have finally reached the semi-finals, predictions. We do have a little bit of time to get our predictions ready and get our predictions rolling. You can get your gamba on, Papi. Get your gamba on. Again, I feel like the safe bet is going to be Cure, but um, again, you can see here that Cyan he can take the big he can take down some big names at any time. Will anyone risk it on Cyan? I wouldn't blame you. Would not blame you. Here we go. The players are just conducting their vetoes. They are getting their vetoes underway. Oh, and we being we are being joined by some of the other casters here. We have Enki casting in Spanish. We have Into the Inu casting in Korean. You do love to see it. Do 
we would love to see it here. Uh, meanwhile, do we have any other updates? My apologies, I, I haven't even checked yet. <laughs> do we have any other updates here on the brackets? Okay, it looks like... Is Oliveris Lemon still ongoing? No shot. No shot. Let me just double check here. I'm checking... Uh, I believe Steadfast and Chicken Man are casting those series. We have an update! Oh my god! Papi, Lemon... I don't know what happened in those games, but Lemon did cause an upset. Lemon took down Oliveira. Not sure if it was a 2-0 or a 2-1, but Oliveira has been knocked out of the tournament. And Lemon is facing off against Nightmare in the next round. It has been updated on the bracket, but uh, Oliveira has been eliminated from the tournament. Again, Lemon has been on fire as well. If you were watching the qualifiers last week, we were going over the, um, the qualifiers of EPT Spring. And Lemon was looking like a beast. He was doing very well for himself, looking very impressive, and I, I'm a little bit in shock. Yeah, I, despite how impressive he was, I wasn't favoring him against Oliveira, but very well done. Very solid result there. Lemon is up against Nightmare in that round of eight. In a PvP. As a reminder, the winner of Lemon versus Nightmare goes up against Dark. So uh, we have our lower semifinals, and because Lemon and Nightmare are still in game one, we will most likely be able to cast the upper semis as well. Most likely. Like, it depends um, if the upper matches are fast and if our matches are slow. We'll see. We'll do our best. But the bracket is progressing. Lemon, right? I know, right? <laughs> because Lemon was pretty, looking pretty good last week, but I'm not, like, he was looking good, but, like, Taking down Oliveira good? I wouldn't have gone that far. Regardless, very impressive. The upsets are real tonight. Upsets are real. People should start mixing in Nexus first and SE2. They try to, but it's so hard to get away with it. I mean, Classic did, to be fair. Did get away with it, but the response to the Nexus first was the goal base. And Cyan, because of how aggressive he was... He was able to keep Classic pinned at home, keep him defending. Remember, Classic was not able to push out at all that game. Um, he went for some Adept Harass early on at the goal base, but he couldn't push out until the very end just because of how assertive Cyan was. He was just so in his face. GG. And more importantly, it wasn't just how aggressive he was. It was also his ability to force Classic to make mistakes. Time and time again, Classic, he was forced to split up his army to rotate between his bases, and he was... Just unable to keep up. Just barely could not keep up with Cyan. Oh, Cosmito. Oh, let's go. <laughs> uh, fala galera, papi. Fala galera. Let's go. As the Vitors are done and we're getting into game number one. And if you're in the chat, predictions are open. Predictions open. Place your bets on how you believe this series will unfold. Will it go the way of the Terran or the Protoss? As spawning in the top left hand corner of Site Delta, we have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Liquid. It is Cure. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the Chinese Protoss player, the Blue Protoss, representing Mystery Gaming. He just took down Classic 2-0. It is Cyan. And I think what I'm really excited about is EPT Spring, the regionals. What I'm referring to is Oliveira. He was the dominant force in the Asia region for years. For years at this point, he was the dominant force. And we would have certain players rise to challenge him. Coffee at times, Firefly at others, where they could pose a bit of a threat. Um, even Cyan. And nowadays, I feel like a lot of these Chinese players have been leveling up, not just the Chinese players, but even from Taiwan. Players like Lemon, who just 2 0 Oliveira, Cyan, Jeshi, Firefly, Coffee, they've all been improving. And I feel like the gap between Oliveira and the rest of the players from his region isn't as large as it once was. Not as large as it once was, which means the Asia regionals are going to be very interesting. It's going to be a very interesting regional. I'm curious if anyone can dethrone Oliveira. I mean, sure, it was done here today in a best of three in a weekly, but 
you know, obviously EBT Spring is something different. Players have time to prepare. Players are always on their A game. It is a different kind of format, a different kind of setting, but I look forward to it nonetheless. As a reminder, EPT Spring, the regionals have started as of a couple of days ago, and they're on every single day for, I believe, the next couple of weeks. So a lot of StarCraft is going on. A lot to look forward to. Meanwhile, it's going to be an economic opener. It's going to be a Rax Expand here by Cure. Be a very economic opener here from our Terran player. Meanwhile, Cyan does confirm this with his probe scout, and he's going for his own gate expand as well. We have our tech of choice. It's gonna be a star gate. Let's go, Mia Micah. Reclaim your throne. True, Papi, true. Mia's there as well, not wrong. As the Reaper, I believe, did not make it into the main, so we have not scouted the tech. We are still in the dark as to whether this is a Twilight Council or a Stargate. Cure is still piecing it together. As the Reaper is forced back. Does our position that Adept, though, is going to be able to skirt around and get into the main base? Second Adept is in position, though. Oh. Yeah, we do deny the scouts. Good movement here by Cyan. Very nicely done. Behind this, the Stargate is done. The first unit is going to be the Oracle. Interesting. We're going for some harassment initially. We're going to be delaying Phoenix production, if not just skipping Phoenixes entirely. As back at home, Cure is getting into his 1-1-1. So Rax expanded into a 1-1-1. Pretty standard build so far out of Cure. Leading into what looks to be a Widowmine drop. To get some scouting information, we do get the scout off. Speaking of the Reaper, it gets into the main base. We get eyes on the Stargate. Cure, he sees all, he knows all. He even saw the Oracle and the second Oracle being produced as well. So Cure is getting ready back at home. Because of that, we focus down on the Hellion instead. Or we try to. We miss a shot. The Oracle did miss a shot. The Hellion It's going to be able to not quite get away, but does buy time. Again, the reason for this is because the Oracle got scattered, most likely Cure would have been ready in the main base with his Widowmine, with his Marines. Cyan knows he doesn't have the surprise factor he otherwise would. So he did go for the Hellion instead. Get the Cyclone to position. We get the Revelation off. And we do get eyes on the production. We see that the Raxes were delayed in favor of the factory and the starport. Getting into our 3 1 1 setup. Medivac drop has yet to move out. We are staying back at home. The reason for this is because of the Oracles. We cannot go for a Marine drop like we wanted to. The Marines have to stay at home a little bit longer to make sure that the oracles don't get out of hand. Especially because he saw the second oracle. So because of that, Cure is just being safe. And Cyan is being greedy by taking the third. Cyan does have map control. He's going for the third base, setting up for... Ooh, setting up for his tech as well. We have a forge, we have a robot, we have a bay on the way with a Twilight Council. This is so greedy! As it has that threading a shade, what I'm referring to is that we're getting a third, we're taking up into Colossus, we're working on upgrades, and we're also taking up into Charge as well. We are just spending so much resources here on tech, on production, on the economy. If Cure were to move out, then Cyan would be in a lot of trouble. But for now, Cure is staying back at home. All the stasis oh, is spotted. Nice bait by Cure. Does bait out the stasis trap. Oracle's making their way towards the main. Making their way towards the main base. We do bait out another stasis as well. Very nicely done, but we only catch the one cyclone. It is enough to force him back. Meanwhile, as the army moves out, the Oracle moves in. Managed to get two SCVs. Pretty good. It also did force Cure back for a moment. Did buy some time. And speaking of buying time, we need a couple more seconds here for the first Colossus to arrive. We have the triple drop towards the south. Observer in the center. Getting eyes on any kind of move out. And you can see Cyan trying to split up his army. Uh, does have most of his forces here at the third base. Has a couple of adepts in the main. Goes for a warp in. 
Fury does manage to unload. Shield battery is still not done. Still not done. We're going for the pylons. We force a recall. At the same time, Kira sending his reinforcements towards that natural. That big mind shot's going off on the Zealots. But the Colossus is here. At the same time, though, the natural uh, is compromised. We're getting on top of the Robo. Big pickup. Robo goes down. Only one Colossus comes out. We will, clean this up. we will clean up this army, but we drop into the third base, and Cyan is being pulled apart. It's just too much. 12 at Probe's Fall. And we're stuck with one Colossus. The Secure backing up. Going to be regrouping, getting his third CC on location. Things are looking good here for Cure. Cyan, he does need time. And the problem here is that Cure, he's being quite active. We have a triple drop towards the south, double drop towards the north. He's not allowing Cyan to recover. There is a Phoenix. Oh, in position. Going to be zoning back the drop. Cyan does actually rotate his army to the main base, though. Okay, okay he's pulling back. Double drop into the natural. Plus two is on the way. And no shield battery. Probes are going to be falling. We do find some damage. We're going for the forge. Ah, plus two. It's not going to finish. Will not complete. We pick up. We get the hell out of there. We boost away. Managed to save most of our army. As it means, they dive on the medevac. They do get it. Not bad. Medevac goes down. At the same time, the main army hits the third. Colossus is out of position. Ooh, mine's just going to be going up. But the overcharge is able to hold on. Cla uh, Cyan, he's holding. Cyan is holding on. Cure behind this has an even worker count plus mules. So Cure has the economic lead. Getting his third base up and running. Getting well underway. It's curious where he's heading around. Zell run by here towards the north. He is going for that mineral line, but can science survive this push? He's got one shield battery, one cannon. He has Phoenix's zone away, a drop at least. Zell say, do you get in? Get a couple workers. But here he does commit. Oh, the bite shots. No, you quite go off. Whew. That could have been a lot worse on those zealots. There's still one widow mine left. The close side, they do take it down. Cyan again, he is holding on. At least with his three base setup, but he needs a fourth. Again, being on an even basis with the Terran is never a position you want to be in, as Kira is the first to expand, taking his fourth on location, getting further ahead. Now, at least Sign is going for Disruptors. Now, I will say that Kira is ahead, 100%, but a couple of good Novas, and Sion can swing a fight in his favor. Disruptors, they are a good way to come back. They are relying on your opponent to mess up a little bit, to be fair. But we have to gamble. We have to take a risk here. So Disruptors are amassing. We didn't even get up to three Colossi. We are stopping at two. That's how desperate we are. Security scans. He spots the main army. He does see the Disruptor. At the same time, we have a secondary force here pushing towards the fourth base. And Cyan, this space, is, it's not going to finish. It's not going to happen. We're out of position. We're going to force a cancel. And this is all that Cure has to do. Just contain Cyan to three bases. Deny the fourth over and over again. As you can see here, Curie rotates around. And he does catch another fourth. No. And that's going to be a kill, not a cancel. 400 minerals down the drain. Ah, Cyan, he's pretty all in. He's going to be recalling back home. But what does this recall really do? Keeps the third alive, but Curie's on four. 
Now, what I will say here is that Cyan, even though his economy is in shambles and even though he's unable to get a fourth, his main army is actually comparable with that of Cure. Uh, we're getting there. Supply-wise, we are getting there. I do favor Cure's army, uh, army composition, though. We have EMPs, we have Vikings, we have plenty of Marauders. How many Marauders? 24! Almost a one-to-one -one ratio with Marauder and Marine, which is crazy. And because of all those Marauders, the Colossi aren't as impactful. Neither are the Archons. That's a, that's a beefy army. And what I will say is that we are still a little bit more vulnerable to disruptors and purification of at least, but here we go. We are pushing, sending everything on the right-hand side. A cyan, he's split up. He's out of position. His main army towards the south. Did you push in? Stay strap does go up, not bad. Ah, but the Robos are exposed. We're going for the Disruptors, and yeah, both Robos, they're going to go down. We deny any more Disruptors coming out. At the same time, there's a run by getting some damage done. Nerves are coming in. Good connection. One Nova does connect the other as well. So far, so good, but the Vikings are going ham. The Colossi are going down. And the Bio Army, it's just tearing through the Protoss. Yeah, Kira, he will win this fight. Cleans up the Colossi, the Disruptors, and the Immortals. And the natural base is going to be going down at the same time. Sure, we deny the third, but that's not good enough. And Cyan, he has lost everything. And he was caught out, and Curie's going for the kill, going for the main. Across the map, the Zelda will clean up. GG gets called, and Cure will take game number one. Will take a lead in this series. GG. Again, a sold game there out of Cure. Uh, just uh, just constantly able to pull Cyan apart. Cyan was just having a really hard time keeping up with the drop play specifically. We saw Cyan multiple times attempt to pre-split his army. Um, and attempt to you know have units in position. Whether in the main, whether the third, whether the natural. But Cure just kept finding ways in. Just kept catching Cyan out of position, off guard. Sam was just having a really hard time rotating between the bases and, more importantly, just scouting the drops themselves to give them the time he needed to get in position. That's probably the biggest thing, is just map control, map awareness, to give him the foresight to actually be ready for him. And with that, Cure takes a lead. And now we're getting into game number two. Let's go. And we're actually going to be loading into Alkione, one of the larger maps in the map pool. A lot of bases to be taken, and a much more secure 3 and 4 base setup. If we wanted to go to the late game, this would be the map to do it. We'll see. We'll see if Cyan tries to embrace that, or if he goes somewhere else. Let's go. Let us go as spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Alkyone. We have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Liquid, leading the series 1 to 0, one game away from advancing on into the grand finals. It is Kyor. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the Chinese Protoss player, the Blue Protoss, representing his own team, Mystery Gaming, down in the series, looking to bounce back. It is Cyan. And as we get ready here for game number two, a big shout out to Falcon Paladin in the chat. Thank you so much for the raid. I apologize for not giving you a shout out during the game itself. Again, things were getting quite intense and we we're getting quite involved. But thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. Hope you had a great ladder session or cast. Thank you so much. A big shout out to Falcon Paladin. Again, uh, for those of you that are maybe unaware, uh, Falcon Pattern, he's a fellow caster, a fellow caster does uh, stream over on Twitch, he has a very active YouTube channel as well, has a lot of VODs out there of both StarCraft 2 and Brood War, so, oh no, hold on, I didn't do it right, uh, Falcon, there we go. You. 
there's a shadow. Oh. Yeah, big shout out to Falcon Pattern, thank you so much. Hope you guys had a great time, and welcome everyone. Welcome to the Korean the StarCraft League. Welcome to the KSL. Your weekly dose, or sorry, bi-weekly dose of Korean StarCraft. But we have had quite a tournament already, quite a lot of upsets. For those who maybe weren't here for it, I recommend the VODs because Cyan, he was able to 2-0 Classic, draw Classic to his knees in a very, very impressive fashion. No cheese. Some more solid games between the two of them. And now he's made it to the semi-finals where he's up against Cure. But Cure, he's built a little bit different. Cure has some of the best Terran versus Protoss in the world. Arguably top two. For a long time, Cure had the best DVP. I would say that nowadays Clem has surpassed him. Uh, but again, together they have some of the best. A lot of people do look to Cure when it comes to the guidance for TVP. And we are going for a very different build. Okay. So, first up, we do have Cure going double gas. It was a double gas open out of Cure, which means a faster factory, faster cyclone production, much more aggressive and assertive play here from Cure. Meanwhile, across the map, Cyan is going not for a Stargate, he's going for a Twilight Council instead. You have that Twilight Council hidden here at the natural, not in the main. Going for Blink Stalkers. Okay. So again, a very different approach. And we'll see if Cyan is able to catch a cure off guard, depending on how many gateways we throw down. This could be two gate blink, three gate blink, or even four gate blink instead. But now, second gateways now finishing up. So two gate blink for the time being. This could just be into an economic build into a third nexus. Into a third nexus. As Kira back at home did initially go for that cyclone. Did go for a cyclone, did go for a couple of widow mines. He's heading out for a drop. And is transitioning into that tech lab. This should be for tank production. Will keep us safe against Blink Stalker base play as Kira did Adam scout. He did confirm complete. the Twilight Council. And that's two more gates. It's four gate blink. Four gate blink here from Cyan. And Kira, he hasn't seen the gateways, but he at least saw the Twilight Council, so he's getting ready for his tanks with his tanks is getting ready is preparing there we go the drop will confirm as well we get eyes on every single gateway cure he sees everything he needs to does know what's going on A nice on burrow there out of cure uh, mine shots gonna be going up oh they are retained here we deny so much mining time in the main base blink is still not done and we're even killing some probes. Oh my god. Five workers go down. Detection has arrived. Mindshot goes off. We take down the Stalker as well. Very good trade here for Cure. And Cyan, he's so committed. He's borderline all in here. He's got his four gate blink, but he was denied so much mining. He can barely sustain himself. And back at home, what do we have? We have a bunker. We have tanks on the way as well. We have a solid defensive line. One tank in the main, one tank in the natural. Marines are in position. We are ready for the Blink Stalkers. And I think this is a mature decision here. Cyan, because of how much economic damage he took, third base. Maybe third base on the way. He is moving out with some Stalkers, but I imagine he's going to be skipping warp ins. There we go. We have a Forge, we have Charge, and we have a Robotics Bay on the way. So, Cyan, he is skipping warp ins. He is spending his money elsewhere on tech. Sand is trying to go for a longer game. Trying to set up for that longer game. Prism is threatening the, threatening the main. Moving in with those stalkers. Are moving in. But again, Sand, he's... Sorry, Cure, he's more or less in position. Good for the Prism. <gasps> no! Oh my god, Stim is not done. Thankfully for Cyan, he does barely get away. Whew. Does survive. But again, Cure, he is solid here on two bases. And he will soon be pushing out. Stim is on the way alongside Combat Shields. Third CC has begun.
And we'll see if Saiyan can keep up with the drop play of Cure. See if we can make up for game one. Cure pushing right through the center. We get a Marine. Threats in the Winter Mines as well. So far, so good, but we bleed out a Stalker. Oh, that should not have happened. Stalker goes down. There we go. We can see Saiyan much more attentive this time. Does pull away, and he's being distracted. The entire army is rotating over to meet up with the main army of Cure, which means we leave an opening, which means the drop does come in, and there's nothing here. Probes are going down. Saiyan, he's pulling back to the natural. We're going for the Robo. Up. Robo isn't going to go down. It looks like it will. Just barely it does fall. At the same time, Cure pushing towards that third base. Overcharge his pop, but it's going to be going down. Another mind shots. Big mind shots there on the Zealots. It looks like Saiyan, he will be able to hold, though. He will clean this up. Ah, but this is not the best trade here for Saiyan. Never mind, the tank survives. He gets one tank, but the other does hold. We get the Colossus as well. Oh my god, I thought that Saiyan would barely hold, but alas. He bleeds out far too much. It looks like he will clean this up, but at what cost? He didn't just lose a Colossus, he lost the Robo. No Colossi, not for quite some time. As the Robo is being rebuilt. Kiri is rallying everything across the map. Kiri, he does want to end it. Remember behind this, he does have his third base. He's not all in. He has an economy, has a better economy than that of Cyan. And Cyan, he needs to make some magic happen. Drop into the main. You're going to get some SCVs. Going for another big warp in as well. Not too bad. And workers are going down. We came to the production at the same time. Cyan, he does hit the third base. And Cure, it's his turn to be out of position. Let's go. We get 12 SCVs. Saiyan, he does deal quite a blow here to the economy of Cure. Prism, the, Prism in the main base does get out as well, does survive. Very impressive. Saiyan, he's not out of this yet. It's still behind, though. The reality is, despite all that damage being done, Saiyan is still in a rough position. He is now ahead in workers, but Cure has mules. And he does mule quite hard. On the prism, no! Prism is finally gonna go down. No anti air. No way to stop the Viking. Cure is pushing, and Cyan, he's not out of the woods yet. Cyan's still in a lot of danger. We have one shield battery. We have an overcharge. Uh, soon to be an overcharge there. Second Colossus has arrived. Marauders are coming in. There are Vikings in the sky. Good force fields. Shaving off some units. Good choke point as well by Cyan. A strong engage there for the Protoss. But the force fields are running out. Big mind connection there on the Stalkers. We collapse on the army and where are the force fields? We don't have any, not anymore. The sentries are going down. We're chasing back Cyan. A force to overcharge. He's getting a fourth. There's a fourth base on the way. Sandy just needs a little bit more time. But again, Overcharge is now on cooldown. And here he's headed for the fourth base. He's spotted by the Observer. Cyan is rotating over, but there's no shield battery at the fourth. Another Zealots. Dragging the army out. Now to four, sorry, three Colossi. Now have three. Vikings are being focused down as well, but we dive on top of the Colossus. Yeah, the Marauders, they stim on forward. We break on through. And there's just too much tear and there's too much cure. He brings down two of the Colossi and he can get the third as well. Yeah, there's just not enough support, not enough buffer. GG gets called and cure. He does take the series 2-0, to zero, advancing on to the Grand Finals. GG.
GG, well played. Congratulations here to Cure as he does take the series, does advance on to those grand finals. My condolences to Cyan. Cyan, he had his own moments. He definitely had his own moments in this series. But in general here, Cure, he was just a little bit too much to handle. Was able to pull him apart left and right, time and time again. Able to out control, out multitask. Cyan, again, just split his attention a little bit too thin and was able to bring him down. GG. GG well played, but a shout out to Cyan because even though he goes down in the semis, it was very impressive for him to make it this far and make it into the semifinals. Cure is one of the best players in the world. There's no shame in dropping a series to Cure, and Cyan will bow out. And that takes us to our next series. That takes us to the upper semifinals. Let's go. Up next is going to be Dark versus Nightmare. As we switch our scenes over. Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the back yourselves. I did just spoil it here, but Nightmare did take down Lemon 2-0. Lemon had an amazing series earlier. He did eliminate Olivera 2-1 in the first round. But he does fall to Nightmare in the end. Again, Nightmare has some of the best PvP in South Korea. Some of the best PvP out there, so... Nightmare was able to just get into his comfort zone, bring Lemon down... And now we have our upper semis. Could be just double checking. Uh, and I believe the upper semifinals is being covered by uh, Chicken Man. I believe Chicken Man has you covered there. And let me just quickly check what game are they in? One, two, or three? Let us see. Uh, they're in game one. Okay, they're currently in game number one. Um, if you guys want to have a look at game one yourself, I will give a link in the chat. There you go. We'll give a link in the chat. And uh, we're going to be waiting. We're going to be waiting for game one to wrap up. And we will be jumping into game number two once game, run game one does wrap up. So, uh, yeah, you can check out game number one yourself. We're going to be going on a short break. We're going to be going on a short break here. When we return, we will have game number two. Um, thankfully, because it just started this series, we still have you know, some StarCraft ahead of us here. We can still catch at least the tail end of the upper semifinals. As a reminder, it's going to be the upper semis, followed by the grand finals as well. Cure, he has some time to rest. He has some time to, to recover, to wait for his next opponent. So for now, take this moment to get some snacks, get some water, take a break, go to the bathroom, drain your disruptors, and of course, massage your marines. We're going to be back with Dark vs. Nightmare. See you soon.
and welcome back everyone welcome back oh my god that is not a result that i was expecting as we're diving into game number two and if you are in the chat predictions are open we are jumping in mid series we're jumping in mid series we missed out on game number one and apparently we missed out on a banger of a game because spawning in the bottom right hand corner we have the best zerg player in south korea but he is down in this series down oh one can he bounce back representing talent esports it is dark prediction predictions open and spawning in the top left hand corner we have its opponent we have the south korean protoss leading the series one to zero one game away for advancing on into the grand finals it is nightmare now again we did miss out on game number one unfortunately i don't know what did occur um it was a bit of a longer game around 14 to 15 minutes or so but uh yeah already a surprising result as dark he's moving out for a hatch block let's go it's gonna be a hatchery into a hatchery into a sporting pool we do have quite an opener but alas oh the drone does not get in does not get here in time the nexus has been thrown down and dark air forged to throw down his gas and his spawning port as quickly as possible we're gonna be going for a gas seal instead into the main doing what we can being a nuisance here again gas stealing against protos can be quite annoying because the gases are quite important in the early game so it does force four probes off the mineral line quite a bit of lost mining time here from nightmare and once we cancel going for another uh, another extractor trick Going for another gas geyser, another gas deal. Dark being such a nuisance. But at least Nightmare is able to expand. At least he does manage to get his Nexus up and running. And we're settling into our game. Going for another extractor trick there. Going for a extractor trick. Going for another gas deal. Uh, gonna be delaying the gas taken by Nightmare for quite some time. And uh, with that, we are going to be calming things down. I don't know why, but um, seeing like gas is being canceled like that, my brain just like, oh, I tried to trick up. And it's not a 15 15. What, what's going on? <laughs> not, not quite uh, what I'm referring to. The gas is going to finish in the main. Oh, that is an interesting choice. And I imagine that was a choice here from Dark. But alas, at this point, Nightmare, he just takes his natural gas instead. At this point, you just take, uh, take your gas elsewhere not worth wasting time killing that gas geyser not yet as he's being active across the map with his adepts now alongside this the downside for dark is that his link speed is going to be a little bit later than normal just because of the unorthodox opener and unorthodox build it's called a vest being gas not natural no it's natural papi it's natural ah uh, it's authentic <laughs> the hyper one shaking my head who is this i stun what are you what are you doing here <laughs> as we do see nightmare just gonna be threatening these adepts in towards that main base gonna be keeping dark on his toes link speed does kick in as it kicks in nightmare is racing back home and interesting follow-up here we're going for a robo and a bait wait what nightmare He's cooking, Pop. He is cooking. He's playing two base. Does make it him just in time. The Lings, they do arrive, but we have a full wall set up. As the third base is going to be delayed. Meanwhile, looking at the vision of Dark, he has not seen the tech. Again, it is going to be a river first into a bay into, I imagine, Colossus. We could go for a Disruptor drop as well. That is possible. And uh, with a river, sorry, with a prism first, most likely going to be a Disruptor. As they're following it up with a Twilight Council, a very unorthodox build here from Nightmare. We'll see how it all comes together. We'll see how it all comes together here as he is attempt attempting to take his third. And he should be able to hold on to it. Behind this Dark already threw down a Roach Horn, a very early Roach Horn here from Dark. Safety Spore on the way. He's getting ready for DTs, the Dark Templar. Again, he has no idea what's coming. He's getting ready for the worst. Glaive Adepts or Dark Templar. Little does he know, it was Colossus, not Disruptor. Okay. Interesting. 
So we have a Colossus Rush here from Nightmare working towards Blink behind it. Uh, this should be a two. This should be an all-in. This should be like a strong timing with two Colossi. That would make sense in my mind. As I say that though, Dark, he's amassing a lot of lings. This makes sense. So traditionally, if you're up against something like Lavid Epps, you'd be amassing up lings and roaches. You'd be shutting down the army and then going for a big counterattack. And if Nightmare isn't too aggressive with these depths, Dark should be hitting this third base. And that's what he's going for. There we go. He's going for a big push. Now, with the help of these Colossi, does Nightmare defend? Does he shut this down? It's going to be close. But it's all or nothing for Dark. He's going for his all-in. Nightmare, I think he was planning this. I think he was hoping for this. And especially with all these Ling reinforcements, they're going to melt against the Colossi. Disruptor behind this as well. Link's still not quite done. Colossus is revealed. Now Dark knows. He's going in nonetheless. Again, his goal here is to try to snipe, but he's going for the dive. Good juggling here from Nightmare. Saves the Colossus. Never goes off. Does connect. Takes out one Ravager. But the Colossus oh, takes a lot of hits. And Dark, it looks like he's snowballing out of control. He breaks through the defensive line. Gets on top of the Colossus as well. Still barely alive. Wow, but he snipes the prism. It goes down to the vials. Bit of miscontrol out of Nightmare. And we're breaking in. Ooh, the vials, they connect with the disruptor as well. And behind this, a third will go down. So the, the control was a little bit lacking there from Nightmare. I could be mistaken, but I think his Colossus took an overshot as well, which is why it got so low so quickly. So a bit of a fumble defense. With that, Dark is looking good. Dark is going for the surround. Does force the blink. Never going to be going up. Oh! Gets a Ravager. Does get a Ravager. And behind this Dark, he's just droning up as best he can. He's on three bases. Soon to get a fourth. Lair is on the horizon. And from here, we can freely just double down on Ling Main Roach Ravager, and we can we can make Nightmare's life so difficult when it comes to expanding and actually saturating this third base. It's going to be so difficult. It's going to be a nightmare. That's there we go. We go for a surround. We do manage to catch the Stalkers as well. A lot of Stalkers are going to be falling. We take the Vials to the face. Blink was on cooldown. And just like that, Nightmare, he gets completely shut down. He barely has an army. And Dark, he's chilling. He's droning, working on upgrades. We have plus one melee on the way. We have Roach Speed as well. So melee, Roach Speed, Bailey Nest. There's no rush for Dark. As he's chilling back at home, he will hit across the map with his Lings. And does he force a cancel? Uh oh. Uh, does cancel the shield batteries. It's a kill on one of them. But at least the Nexus does stand strong. Does survive. Dark from here, he's backing off. He's joining up to 60. That's three base saturation. Or getting up to three base saturation. With five more drones on the way. And we'll see if Dark stops joining here. I would be expecting a three base all in out of Dark, where you cut workers at 66 at most. And you just double down on Ling Bane Roach Ravager. As he should know that Nightmare, he's kind of stumbling his way into the mid game. Yeah, and Dark, he is focusing on army supply, focusing on army production. He smells blood in the water. He knows how vulnerable Nightmare is. I mean, if somehow, if somehow Nightmare can survive this push, then he can recover, right? Because Nightmare, he's you know, teching up, working on upgrades, building up his economy. Dark, he is not droning. So if we can somehow survive this, then we wouldn't be in a bad place. But that's easier said than done. As Dark is about to max out. He's got seven overlords on the way. Bit of a supply block there for Dark. But there we go. That's 32 bailings. Sorry, 51 bailings in production. Oh my god. Bailing speed has completed. And 
here we go. Dark, ready to pull the trigger at 170 supply. He's got the concave, he's got the arc. Do you have some disruptors? Well, where's the Colossus? It's across the map. Never goes off. Teasing connection. Teasing connections here with these Novas. But we still have far too much. We can still overwhelm. Good connection once again from those disruptors. We break through the Stalkers. We get into the Mineral Line. Probes are going down, and this throw base is going to go down for a second time. And despite the Novas, despite the connections, does not matter. But the Colossus, the height goes down as well. It, did so, it got so much value here over the course of the game, but GG gets called and Dark ties up the series one to one. We're going to the ace match. Let's go. Let us go. Nightmare let Dark gas steal. Yes, that's why Nightmare pulled the boys to focus down the gas and have some lost mining time. That, that shaking my head. <laughs> shaking my head, Fab. But there we go. We do have a tied up series here. We are going to the ace match. Let's go. Let us go. So, yeah, really interesting build out of Nightmare. If you remember, he did go for a Robo Opener. Went for a Robo into Colossi. Um, it was an interesting build. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to hold on to that third base. I feel like we could have maybe held on there. Um, but, alas, the Colossus took a lot of damage. Was forced back. Um, yeah, the control was a little bit lacking there. It was a little bit up in the air. And in the end, in the end, Dark did overwhelm. And now we find ourselves in game three, in the ace match. Let's go. Let us go. But yeah, it was really cool to hear. Oh, sorry. I didn't even get to mention it, but a big shout out to Dave Testa for the raid. Do appreciate it here. Uh, Dave was, of course, casting, and Dave is one of the big names behind the KSL. Without Dave Testa, without Chicken Man, the Korean Starcraft League would not be possible, would not be a thing. So thank you so much for everything that you have done for the scene and for the casting that you did earlier. Apparently Dave was casting with the StarCraft Historian. Really cool to hear. Really nice to see. Uh, but it looks like Dave is going to be tapping out here for the night. And uh, we are going to be picking up where he left off. That's morning. In the bottom right hand corner of site Delta, we have our South Korean Zerg player, our Red Zerg, representing Talon Esports, tying up the series one to one. It is Dark. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have his opponent, we have the South Korean Protoss player, the Blue Protoss, representing himself, currently teamless, deserving to be on the team, as he did force at least the ace match here out of his opponent. It is Nightmare. go. Dark moving out with his drone. Looking to take the unnatural natural. It does take it here at the triangular position. And Nightmare, of course, I'm sure content forcing a more uncomfortable start here out of Dark, at least in the early game. Again, you can never be too sure as to whether or not Dark is going for a third or going for a hatch block, as we saw in game one. He is willing to spice it up. Is willing to as Nightmare is just getting into its own standard opener gate expand. Do love to see. We go. He's just getting into his gate expand. And we're easing into game two. Really, I'm just got my eyes on Nightmare to see what kind of tech he goes for. It was just so so surprising, and I was caught so I was caught so off guard to see Nightmare rush into Colossi the way that he did in game number two. But I doubt we're going to be seeing another river opener. I'm feeling something more standard, but I mean, clearly Nightmare can do anything under the sun. Not afraid to whip anything out here, so we'll see. We'll wait for the Cyber Core. Based on the pile of placements, again, hard to tell. It does look like a Twilight Council opener, but we'll see. The Stargate is still viable. 
Very much so. Probe's going to be pulling out. There it is. Stargate here right next to the main. The pylon was thrown down closer to the mineral line. The way this works, it's a bit of a give and take. Because the pylon is right next to the mineral line, it does mean that you your mining time is reduced or you're able to get back into mining as quickly as possible because it isn't thrown down further out here at the edge of the main. The downside is it takes your Oracle a lot longer to get across the map. So there's a bit of a give and take there with that placement. It is technically more efficient economically wise. Economic wise. It is more efficient. As our first adept is going to be moving out across the map, we have to be very careful with our adepts. If we throw them away, then things can get out of hand. And this makes more sense here. It is a Void Ray first, not an Oracle. Now we understand why we didn't go for the pylon closer to the edge. Um, I did mention that that does reduce the time it takes for the Oracle to get across the map. But we're not going across the map. We're going for the Overlords. Adept does get away, does get two drone kills. Overlord is going to be shut down. Darky does confirm the Void Ray. Now, with this, we could even go into additional Void Ray production. Because the Stargate is further in, you can actually hide the follow-up units. We do reveal the Oracle, at least for now. The Overlord does fall. Oracle is on the way. And behind this, we can go into a second Stargate. We can go for a Twilight Council into Glaive Adepts. We can go for a Robo. There's a lot available here, and Dark is going to be in the dark. Going for a four-minute lair. A uh, very interesting. Okay. A very fast layer here out of dark. I'm concerned. With the amount of queens that we have, uh, are we going to be going for something like Drop Lords? Do we go for a Nidus, a Link Queen, Nidus all in? What is the plan with this lair? A very aggressive response. I'm leaning on a Link Queen, Nidus all in just because we don't have any overload speed. As I say that, we are still droning though. Void Ray is being forced back. Oracle dips in towards that third base, but is zoned away. And our follow-up is going to be a Forge. Sorry, it's going to be a Twilight Council. No Forge, which screams Glaive Adepts. And there it is. Glaives is on the way. If this were to be something like Blink or Charge, it would typically be alongside a Forge for plus one. Plus one does not affect the power of the Adept. It doesn't really impact its, its effectiveness here. And there it is. It is, in fact, a Link Queen Knight is all in. Again, because there was no Overlord speed, that's really all it could be. We didn't take any additional gases. I'm curious how this shapes up, though. Link Queen Knight is all in against Glaive Adepts. A lot of this will depend on how many Warpins we get, how many Adepts we do have. So we are banking up four Adepts here in the natural. There is a Link in position. Overseer headed to the main base. Here we go. Here come the Adepts. Now, what's scary here, there's no Roach Warren. And now Dark knows. Now he realizes how much danger he's in. Bailey Nest gets thrown down, but that is a late Bailey Nest. Uh-oh. Dark, he is in a bit of trouble here. The Nidus has been scouted. Big moment for Nightmare. He knows. Behind this, shield battery on the way at the third. Robo in production at the natural. More shield batteries being thrown down. And he does zone away that Overseer. And now we're pivoting away. Invitation pit. Swarm host? I mean, we have a Nidus Swarm, so it makes sense. May as well make use of Swarm host. So we can see Dark being very fluid here. He recognizes that he got scouted, so the all-in is not going to work. So he's no longer going for a Link Queen. Nidus all-in is pivoting away. He is droning. And we'll see what is done with that Infestation pit. I'm feeling Swarm host, but we'll see. Things are pulling back. Gases are being taken. We could try to go for a fast hive. Um, our upgrades will most likely be melee. We could try to go for fast hive into ultras. That's another option. Still yet to be determined. As Lings are still being very active on the map. Usually when Dark does go mass Ling like this, then something like a hive rush is on the table. But we're going for plus one range. Okay. Very interesting. We're actually not making use of the infestation pits. Oh, no, there we go. There's a swarm host. <laughs> there we go. Did mention it again. Because we already have the Nidus Swarm, it makes sense to go into swarm host. To make use of it. We'll just 
waiting for it to be thrown down. We have a safety roach one on the way, which means we're only making a handful of swarm hosts. It's going to be 10 swarm hosts, and from here, we're going to be pivoting into Ling Roach Ravager. Dark still being very active with his Lings. Keeping our opponent busy here. We have Lings harassing that third. Overseer into the main. Nidus Storm does complete. The Swarmers are going for the natural. Oh, and it was heard. And it looks like the creep was not spotted. Local Swain for that main base. We have a Stasis Trap. Oh. And a big connection. Very nice Stasis there from Nightmare. He shuts down the first wave. It does no damage. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> that was... Oh, my God. Yeah, Locust Wave does nothing. And behind this, we're going to Sky Toss. I love this. I love this from Nightmare. Taking up into Sky Toss. Laying around by... Ooh, he's going to get shut down. Dark bleeding out a lot. Going for a second Locust Wave. This time, he forces back the probes. Ooh, gets shut down by the Colossi. And this is getting worrisome. This is getting scary here for Dark. He needs these warm hoods to gain value. Looks like he gets a couple of stalkers at least. Going for the Colossi. Goes to the dive and up. Oh, no overcharge. Bit of a sip of no overcharge. Both Colossi go down. Late reaction at the Nightmare. Aye, aye, aye. That should not have happened. Again, the overcharge was popped just as the Colossi were dying. And suddenly, Dark. Not looking too bad. Those are some high value pick offs there. Kind of this building up his Roach army. Getting into Ling Roach. Another Night Swarm is on the way. He is spotted by Nightmare. Will deny it. We'll get denied. We'll get denied. We have some Ling main game rates. Getting poised to dive in. Stasis Trap has made it out. No more force fields. Decent connections. Decent bailing connections on the Adepts. Dark is being forced back behind this with those range upgrades. It makes sense to go into Lurker Tech. Lurker Den is on the way. Lurker Swave coming in once again. Is collapsing of the army. Can we get the Colossi? He's going for it. Up oh, goes to the dive and he will not get the Colossi. Not the first one though. Yeah, the overcharge is popped in time. Nightmare holds. Nightmare does hold. No call with his pants down. Not this time. Not two times in a row. But again, the goal here for Dark is to just buy time to keep Nightmare busy, keep him pinned back at home while he builds up his Lurkers. And then by the time Nightmare counterattacks, there's going to be a wall of Lurkers waiting for him, and Nightmare won't be able to pull anything off. To be fair, though, that's why we have a Fleet Beacon. It would be ideal to start working towards something like a Skytoss transition. We're not there yet, though. We have a Mothership, but nothing else. I would love to see like a second and a third Stargate. Nightmare is on four bases. Does snipe the Nidus. The Lurker's Wave is going to buy some time. But these Swarm Hosts, they are left alone. They are vulnerable. The Nidus is going to finish up. Oh, it's going to be close. Does he escape? He does. Whew. So close there. The Swarm Hosts, they do manage to get away. One Swarm Host went down. Nightmare looking to push out. How many um, how many lurkers do we have? Three. Soon to be six. Not enough. Six lurkers. It's okay. Not a bad count. So we're looking for more. Spire in production as well. I do love this. Again, getting, re getting ready for the Sky Toss. Speaking of, there it is. We have plus one air attack and two more Stargates on the way. I do think that this transition is a little bit late, though. I think we could have thrown this down like a minute or two ago. Could have been earlier there for Nightmare. He's pushing in. He runs into, into the Lurkers. Big spike shots going up. Oof. A lot of Stalkers going down. You can see how bruised this army is only from the lurk from the Lurkers. My brain keeps wanting to say Lucas. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of Lurkers in position. There's no pushing in. Not with the ground army. It's not going to happen. We are at least able to clear up all this creep. 
So the Rambai is met with by these roaches. Nice swarms are on the way, but Nightmare, he does come across it once again. Okay, very, very good map awareness here by Nightmare. Able to keep up with most of these Nida Swarms. Behind this, carrier production has commenced. We have one carrier so far, but we're building it up. Getting into that Sky Toss. Getting into that late game. As a reminder, as we're getting into carrier production, we have one Spire, now a second Spire on the way, and we're already working on upgrades for the Corruptors. So Dark, he's already getting ready for that scenario. For that Corruptor transition. So really good foresight here out of Dark. Um, I love that Nightmare has been so active, there's almost no creep. There's almost... There's basically zero creep here towards the south. There's a couple of active tumors here towards the north, but there's barely any map vision here for Dark. That is going to make it easier for Nightmare to rotate between the bases when he does get his Sky Toss out. Meanwhile, Zella drop into the main. Nightmare is maxed out, so he can't warp in. A warp in would have been beautiful there, but Nightmare is on 200 supply. So no warp ins available. Locust Wave does hit top right. It looks like we get the Nexus. I was praising Nightmare earlier for being able to keep up with the with the Nidus Worms, but alas, he is unable to keep up with those Swarm Hosts. Base goes down. Big pick up. Yeah, Dark. He didn't even Nidus, by the way. He just walked across the map. <laughs> he just he just waddled across the map. Got the got the Locust Wave off. Meanwhile, that's a lot of cannons. That's a, that's a lot of sack defense on the way. I hope you're ready. Settle yourselves in for the late game. We're, we're getting walls of cannons and shield batteries. Both towards the south and soon towards the north as well. Nightmare is turtling up. Dark once again rotating around with his locust. Or with his swarm host. Is spotted by the observer. Nightmare in position. We can maybe get one cannon, if that's... Oh, not quite. Don't even lose a cannon. So look, this way it runs out. Dark, now able to gain some ground here towards the north, but Nightmare has eyes on this. He has the Observer. He should be on the way to shut this down. As Dark is desperately trying to respread that creep. Oh, the Swarm Hosts, they get caught. Oh. Nightmare does force them back. Does get one. Gets two. Two Swarm Hosts go down. Good pickoffs. Meanwhile, getting into Viper production. Ultra Cavern on the way. Just a bit of everything. Uh, there's no Greater Spire yet. It is a little bit too soon for that. But uh, once we get into 2-2 uh, two -two air upgrades, we should be working towards Greater Spire. To eventually get into... Corruptor Broodlord. Not that many cannons here, but we do have the cloak. Uh, with that cloak, there is no detection, and the Locust Wave does nothing. Okay, good defense here by Nightmare. Very nicely done. Again, showing the utility of a single mothership. Does defend the base. Coming back in, looking at the army sizes, we have six carriers for Colossi. I believe Storm is done. Yep, Storm is done. Plenty of High Templar on the ground. This is a pretty beefy army. Looking quite solid. Oh my, oh my god! The Stalkers! Oh my! Almost every single Stalker goes down. Massive spine shots going up. Nightmare just running into those Lurkers, face checking. That was a meat grinder. Ay, ay, ay. Thankfully, he doesn't lose any High Templar, but that was brutal. Now we're getting to Archons. To be fair, I'm sure we wanted to get rid of those Stalkers, but not like that. As we pounce on those Archons, we get one of them. Oh, almost get a second. Almost do get a second. Again, at this point, Dark should be transitioning out of these Swarm Hosts. They were necessary early on because of the disrupted build. And we can see Nightmare killing his own Colossi. Making room.
Sark is rotating around. He's trying to catch this Void Ray. Uh, doesn't quite find it, though. Meanwhile, the main army rotates over towards the south. This forward base, ah, it's going to go down. There are plenty of lurkers, though. How many? 21 lurkers. Jesus. That's a lot of lurkers, Bathy. And are we going to commit? Nightmare does rotate around. The local save hits the northern base. Is going to be able to shoot through some of these cannons. Show us the yoinks. We got the mothership. Mothership and a Colossus as well. Minus 300, minus 300. Mothership goes down. A good catch. We even get a High Templar. Bit of miscontrol there from Nightmare. High Templar goes down. Meanwhile, towards the north, we did clean up the cannons, but only the cannons is being rebuilt. Where's the lurkers? They are slightly out of position. The big spine shot's going to be going off here on the Archons. We got one. Oof. We got some High Templar as well. See here, that was three High Templar going down. How many do we have left? Four. I believe two with the main army. At the same time, Zealot Rumbai. Ooh, does get a base. Okay, the hatchery is going to go down. Big pick up there by Nightmare. At the same time, Locust Wave this time is coming in, and there aren't as many cannons as there once were. Good storm. We're turning around and getting on top of the hatchery. And the hatchery getting low. And a big snipe here. A nightmare. He kills the northern and the southern base. Meanwhile, across the map, Locust Wave mainly dealt with the main, nah, mainly dealt with the side defense. Spine shots going off. We clean up every single Archon. We can dive on top of the army. Nightmare not respecting those lurkers. He throws away his ground army. And now we can keep pushing. Oh, the Parabomb. Parabomb takes down the carrier. And Dark, he's on the hunt. He knows that there's only one Archon. And without Archons, there's nothing stopping the Corruptors from diving in. Okay, yeah, that's what the Archons are for. That's what the Storms are for. But Dark, he has momentum. Diving in. High Templar goes down. Do we get a storm off? Ah, but yeah, we're going to be cleaning up that Sky Toss army. Uh, the Overcharge putting in a lot of work. Yeah, but the carriers are going down one after the other. Uh, the Lurkers are going to be falling, though. Yeah, as more carriers have arrived. Locust Wave does come in. We're running out of Corruptors. And it looks like we barely... Do we have enough? We do! There's one more carrier. We snipe him. Dark backs off and Dark. He's remaxing instantly with Corruptor Lurker. Lurker? Sorry, with Corruptor Ultra. <laughs> huh? I'm so used to saying Lurkers. Aye, aye, aye. Again, the Lurker count was reset. Getting into Ultras. Rushing into a Massling army. And Nightmare Key attempts to expand, but alas, these bases are so vulnerable. Where are the cannons? Where are the shield batteries? They were cleaned up earlier, and they were not rebuilt. And this Link Flood, it's getting out of hand, getting out of control. We don't have plus three melee, but it is going to be enough regardless. We clean up the Zealots. We go for the High Templar! We got one! We force the Archon. At the same time, Logos is coming in, and Nightmare, he's being pulled apart. We killed 26 probes and a Nexus, and we're getting even more than that. Because this Southern Nexus is going to fall as well. And this center base. Three bases go down. Aye, aye, aye. Again, this is all off of the back of Nightmare overextending earlier and pushing into those lurkers. As soon as Nightmare lost his ground army, that was go time for Dark. Again, Sky Toss on its own is not good enough. It does need support. With its Archons, with its Storm. In this case, Immortals, as we're making three Immortals at a time. Again, the Immortals are, resp are a response to the Ultras. But Nightmare, he's out of steam. He's running out of steam. He's running out of gas and minerals. Nightmare, he's stuck at 113 supply. No mineral bank. Barely any mining going on right now. He desperately needs a base. And Dark isn't going to give it to him. Now 
Nice catch. We get an immortal. Ling's once again coming in. Dark, has he seen the Nexus? Not yet. Hasn't seen the base. How many carriers? We have eight carriers. And Dark is on 14 corruptors. We could do with some more corruptors. Definitely could, but again, we are maxed out. We have more lurkers on the way. Nightmare is looking to break out. And Dark, he's responding with his army. Has to be careful not to be too premature. But he's rotating over. His lurkers are kept towards the south. Looks like Dark, he's expecting a zealot run by. So the lurkers are in position. Night Storm is on the way. Nightmare, he is slowly getting this base up and running, but he needs more time. And Dark should soon be pushing. Night is finish. We could be seeing a Locust Wave on the way here towards the north. Oh, no, never mind. Towards the south instead. That is still a lot of cannons to work through, so it's going to take a while. We're getting there, though. Bailey's rolling in. Bailey's there trying to get past those locust waves. And there we go. We get it. We bust into the cannons. We're gaining ground at the same time. The northern Nidus Worm does get shut down. But there was once a wall of cannons. Not anymore. And now here come the Ultras. Yeah, the one-two punch. Ultras are busting in. And do we have a recall? But Nightmare, he's not going for the recall. He gives up on the base. Which is brutal. Night Nightmare is going down to one base economy. He's forced to push in. Workers are rotating. We do yoink an immortal, but at last it will escape. Nexus did fall. And yeah, Nightmare, he's stuck here on his one final base. He's trying to take top right. That's not a bad base to go for. As the Ultras, they did not turn around. They're threatening the natural. Nightmare turning all the way back home. He does expose these bases. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned. We do have a recall, thankfully. The Nightmare, he's pushing towards the south. His army is spotted. Yeah, as Nightmare pushes in, Dark likewise moves out to that center base, forces the recall. This is a base Nightmare can't afford to lose. If you lose that center base, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be the loss of that top right base as well. Ultras, they come in for another counter-attack, another run by. Remember, Nightmare, he can't recall. Not anymore. It's on cooldown. There is no recall available. Ultras doing what they can. They're being cleaned up. They do move through a lot. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They take down the Stalkers. The Ultras, they, win. they come out on top of there in that fight. They force back the army. Once again. Yeah, Dark, he's just all over Nightmare here. All over him. Forcing him this way and that. Pulling him apart. Catching a couple of stray workers here and there. Dark, he's expanding towards the bottom left. Even soon to be taking some of Nightmare's old bases. Now, Nightmare, he is on a two-base economy. He can sustain himself a little bit longer here. Like, this army is still something to be respected. It is 3-3. It is eight carriers. Plenty of Archons as well. Dark is taking it slow. Does have 3-3 of his own. Does not have a Greater Spire. Bear that in mind. 
Ooh, as that bailing one might get in, the 17 probes go down. Ay, ay, ay. A massive bust. Nightmare, he's down to 26 probes. And we're going in. We got one. We're doing one carrier, a second carrier as well, a third carrier, we're getting picked apart. By right, Templar, we're out of position. Feedbacks were too late. Bailing run by once again. Into the mineral line. And it's all or nothing for Nightmare. Zelda run by is gaining ground. We're getting into a mineral line. Drones are falling. We catch some reinforcements. Zelda's doing quite a lot, actually. Forcing Dark to respond. Meanwhile, the Vipers are ready for some more abductions. Preemptive Storm. We do feedback one of the Vipers, but the other is topped up. And the Locust Wave. We're going for the kill. We're going for the Nexus. Uh, I spoke too soon. It was on Emu. We'll threaten the base. Now, 15 drones did go down to the Zelda Rabbi, which is pretty substantial, but the Nexus goes down! Ah, oh, we're down to one mining base. Again. Not like this. And here comes the Ling Rumbai. Oof. We catch more workers. Nightmare, it's a tough position to be in. You're just stuck out on the map. Shield battery goes down. Nightmare, he's racing back home. He's trying to at least. As a lurker has arrived, we don't have detection. There we go. We force the recall. Only one carrier and the observer. Which you hold. Lucas Wave is going to be hitting that triangular third. No mining going on whatsoever. But we get some cannons, and it's just been a slow, methodical kill here of Nightmare. A slow, methodical death. As again, Nightmare, he still has a terrifying army, which is why Dark isn't, like, aping in. If he loses a fight, then Nightmare can very quickly go for a base trade. Um, so it is quite it is quite scary, it is quite terrifying. So Dark has just been systematically denying bases over and over again, getting into mineral lines. Sniping tech. Just harassing Nightmare to death. Even here, we get an Archon. And Nightmare, he just hasn't been able to do anything. I mean, he had a pretty successful Zealot run by earlier, but outside of that, he's been looking to try to catch the army off guard. I feel like this maybe would be a different scenario if Nightmare had his mothership. Like, this army, as you can see here, it's so immobile. Outside of recalls, it's so difficult to bounce between bases, which is why the mothership adds so much more flexibility to this army. But uh, it was never rebuilt. It's never rebuilt. And the Ling run by, it's gonna take down the natural base. We bust into the main. And I can't believe that these swarm hosts have been alive the entire game, by the way. It's not like we've rebuilt and reinvested into them. Hey, right, they've been doing well. Only five swarm hosts died this game. The rest, they've stood strong, stood the test of time. Just non-stop aggression, non-stop harassment, non-stop value as they kill the final base. No more mining, zero economy here for Nightmare. Fleet Beacon goes down. I mean, he's down to two next site and zero mining. Probes are coming back. No! The probes, get out of here. They're trying to make it back home. They're going to be zoned away, and we're going for the kill. The Lunkers, they're coming in. The probes, they make it. They do make it back. And it looks like Nightmare, he's finally got the he's finally gonna get the fight that he was looking for, but it's too little too late for that. We have all the spines, sorry, a wall of spores. Lurkers with their spines. Locust Wave comes in. Let's go. The probes are a part of the fight. Let's go.
Nightmare, he's gaining ground working through this full forest. Ooh, we take a lot of spine shots to the base. A lot of lurker shots. And with this one, two Archons. Big power bomb here on the carries. We go for the dive. And there's just too much in the air. We clean up the carriers. They all go down. Do we have a Greater Spire? We still don't have a Greater Spire, so there's no Broodlords. <laughs> Unfortunately. But it doesn't matter. GG gets called. There's one Archon left, and Dark will take the series 2-1, to one, advancing on to the Grand Finals. GG. GG, well played. Congratulations here to Dark, as he does take the series in the end. This was a pretty uh, wild game, though. As a reminder, initially Dark went for a Link Queen Nidusol in, which got scattered, and his opponent happened to happened to be going for Glaive Eps. Um, so the Link Queen the Link Queen Nidusol in was completely denied. As a result, he pivoted away from that and went into Swarm Host because he already had the Nidus Worm. Swarm Host made plenty of sense, and. Dark initially wasn't getting damage done with them, but over time he gained value. He was able to get into Lurker play, able to get into a longer later game with five, six bases. Did make it that far, and yeah, Nightmare did feel like he was one step behind. I feel like he had, he had the opportunity to get into Skytrus a lot faster, uh, but Nightmare never quite did commit until a little bit later on, and by then it was a little bit too late. Dark had so much map control. GG. GG, well played. We have our two finalists. Let's go. We have our two finalists here. It is going to be Dark versus Cure in a best of five. Let us go. It is going to be that best of five. Let me just quickly set up the predictions in the chat so you can get your bets going. You can get your gamba, Papi. Get your gamba. Finals, best of five. Dark versus Cure. Okay, predictions will open up once we have the videos done and once we have our lobby. Once we do have that lobby. Just catching up with the chat. Uh, hello, Joe, as in the chat. Live VIP, your streams on YouTube have been getting recommended to me a ton, but I prefer Twitch chat. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. All good. Um, I'm happy to see that our, our YouTube stream has been getting a little bit more momentum. A little bit more momentum over the past couple of weeks. I mean, we've been quite active, so... Ah, feels good, man. Feels good. But it makes sense. Um, our YouTube chat isn't too active. I think it's... um YouTube chat is mainly active during events like SARS War 11 and WTL. That's what I, mean. I think. Um, I think we just get a lot of viewership on YouTube from like Southeast, from Southeast Asia, um, and from Korea as well. It's usually where we're, where we do get some decent viewership. But uh, regardless, welcome, welcome. Hope you've been enjoying the broadcast. We've made it. We've made it to the grand finals. Our grand finales here, our final series of the night. Vetoes are underway. Dynasty is vetoed. Side Delta has been vetoed as well. Interesting. Getting into our map order. The Copium. That was a little bit of Copium towards the end there. A little bit. I mean, it's it's hard to tap out when you have, like, a 100 supply army, right? When you have, like, a decent Skytos army, you know that you can maybe, like, there is a chance to win. There's a chance to win a fight, but um, it's a slim chance. It is a slim chance. GG well played. What a series of these. So it was good. It was good. Good series. A solid series here as we are getting ready for those finals. And uh, it is going to be that best of five, so we will have plenty of games ahead of us. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we've seen quite a lot of Dark versus Terran recently, but um, most recently in ESL Open Cup Asia, it was a finals between Dark and Gumiho. And Gumiho played Mech three out of four games. Almost every game Gumiho played Mech, so I'm looking forward to seeing some bio, bio action instead. I know that Cure has been one to dabble in mech, like he sprinkles it into a series, but um, 
isn't one to embrace it that much. Not as much as Gumiho. So, I'm here for it. I'm ready for some bio action. I'm ready for it. As it looks like we're still just trying to pick out our map order. Here we go. But again, hope everyone in the chat has been enjoying themselves. Hope you guys uh, have a good weekend as well. Again, our weekends are usually busy with StarCraft. Um, we're almost done with Saturday here. And uh, in a couple of hours, we're going to be live with Sea Duckling Open. With Sea Duckling Open. If you're curious, if you're wondering what exactly is Sea Duckling Open, it is um, a tournament that we host, a tournament that we run. It is a bronze to diamond tournament. It is a monthly Back in the day, like 2017, uh, 2018, we used to host this as a weekly tournament. It used to be much more consistent. Um, but nowadays, you know, we're so busy casting other things, we can't commit to Sea Duckling Open on a weekly basis anymore. Instead, nowadays, it is a monthly. It is going to be a monthly tournament. And um, yeah, that's going to be in a couple of hours. So look forward to it. If you're interested, if you're between the ranges, between the leagues of bronze and diamonds, you can partake if you do wish. And uh, after Sea Duckling Open, we're going to be diving into World Team League. WTL Code A is this evening in, uh, like, what, seven hours time? Six hours time? Something like that. Here we go. Yeah, exclamation mark SDO in the chat if you guys want a link. Guys, do you want a link to that bracket? And here we go. We have we have our map order. It's going to be Crimson Court, followed by Post Youth, followed by Amphion, Oceanborn, and Alkyone as game number five. Okay, Post Youth did not get vetoed. Interesting. Show us what you got. See, Duckling open. The reason I have Dark have to change course. He was on the path to victory. Uh -huh. Change course? Which course, Bobby? Which course? Where, where, where are we going? Oh, now you made me hungry. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit peckish, not gonna lie. Gonna be ordering food right after this series. We're getting some food. Uh, meanwhile, let's make sure we get everyone in here. Inviting all of our lovely casters. And if you are in the chat, predictions are now open. Place your bets on who you believe is going to take this series and become this week's champion. Predictions open. Best of luck. Will it be Cure? Will it be Dark? As a reminder, it's going to be a best of five, not a best of three. So a bit of a longer extended series. I do appreciate it. And also a shout out to Chicken Man and Dave Tessa. I mentioned it before, but uh, Chicken Man and Dave Tessa, they're the two organizers of the KSL. Without them, the Korean StarCraft League would not be possible, would not be a thing. If you want to support the Korean StarCraft League, there is a command in the chat, exclamation mark KSL. Exclamation mark KSL in the chat, you will get a link to the Patreon Via the Patreon, you can get replay packs. You can get other benefits as well. I believe you can gain access to joining lobbies and being a part of the broadcast itself. I think you'll be, you'll um, gain access to casting if you do wish. So there is a lot of benefits benefits to the Patreon. Do consider supporting. Otherwise, enjoy the show. As we're getting into the finals and spawning in the top right-hand corner of Crimson Court, we have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Liquid. It is Cure. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Zerg player, the Blue Zerg, representing Talon Esports. It is Dark. Here we go. Again, I want to give the edge to Dark in this series, but I do not expect a 3-0 in either direction. I don't expect it to be that one-sided. I'm hoping for a more back and forth, as Dark is going for a pool first. Interesting. Okay, so a pool first here out of Dark. 
This should just be to be a little bit more assertive early on for a handful of links to disrupt the opener of Cure to delay the expansion if at all possible. We should be going for a hatchery into a gas geyser behind this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> for a moment there, I was like, is he taking the gas? He's crazy. No, no, he's going for the hatchery. Um, My apologies. This could also be a gases build. Okay, there we go. So it's going to be a pool hatch gas opener here. So with this build, we can head into a handful of lings. We can go across the map. We can delay the CC on location. We'll see how hard Dark does commit to that as he is banking up his larva. And there it is. Six lings are on the way. Now, this is not an all in. We should be droning behind this. These six lings, their goal is to avoid this Reaper, is to manage to skirt around the Reaper, get across the map and get some economic damage done. Oh my, wait, but what? A cure is going for a Rax into factory. He's delaying a CC. This is wild. This is not done. Uh, a very aggressive build here at a cure. Meanwhile, we do see Dark going for a Roach Rush behind this. So we have six lings initially. Now these lings are going to be forcing the Reaper back home. Ideally, they force the Reaper to turn back around. And that means that the scout is going to be denied. Ideally for Dark. Meanwhile, behind this, it's going to be a Rax into factory into a CC on the low ground. This is very suspect. Dark should get eyes on the satch on the um, production on the building here of that CC. He does get eyes on the factory as well. And he does force a cancel. Big cancel there from Dark. And the Reaper does turn around. We do not scout the Roach Warren. Cyclone production has commenced. Just a wild build here out of Cure, and he gets punished so hard because of it. That was a big cancel. We focus on as many SCVs as we can. We get two. Two SCVs. We get eyes on the 111. This is borderline one base all in from Cure. And we have roaches on the way. And Cure doesn't know. Ooh, lifting up his racks to hunt down the Overlord. Bold move. This does mean that we have that much less to work with. Lings, they do, they do slip back in. There's one Cyclone to defend, soon to be two. Roaches are on the way. Oh, we don't delay the starport, but we do kill that Overlord. Without that Overlord, no more high ground vision. Dark, he's amassing his army, and now he's droning. It's a very weird game state. On the one hand, this command center for cure is insanely late. So because of that, even though Dark has a lower drone count, he can recover, he can re-drone. On the flip side though, he invested quite heavily into these roaches, and so far they have not paid for themselves. So far we have two cyclones on the high ground, honestly this is a pretty good defensive setup. Unless Cure gets caught out like this, then um, he should be fine. And even here, like he's able to kite back, good control here to Cure, he does defend. And with the power of this starport, we can harass. With this medevac we can be active, we can go for a drop across the map, we can hunt down overlords, we can get some economic damage done. Again, this is a weird game state. As Kira's dropping. Behind this dark, he does somewhat saturate his natural, but he's making links. Quite a lot of them. Are we setting up for a second all in? It does feel that way. Third base is about to be thrown down. It is spotted by the Cyclones. Drone is killed. But dark is not droning. Link speed just now ratcheting up, wrapping up. Does he get the Overlord? Oh, he does. Overlord goes down. Supply blocking dark. And do we have anything at home to defend? We have two. So we have the one cyclone. Here we're racing back home. Here come the lings. And we're all in. It is a second all in here from dark. The roaches take a lot of hits. And one roach goes down. We have a banshee. With the help of this banshee, we should shut this down. Yeah, we're not breaking through. Not anymore. Files. Oh, they do connect. They take down some SCVs. But the repair is too good. We're holding the line. Here he's shutting this down. He does bleed out one Cyclone. Another Ravager does complete. And we're getting more SCVs. Oh, trying to focus on the Cyclones. He gets one. Oh, not quite. The juggling. Juggling is too good. We do get a lot of worker kills though. And even though Cure is holding, even though he's on 2cc, he's down to 17 workers. And we do barely break through. There's nothing left, though. As Dark is cleaned up. But he's flooding more links across the map. Now he's starting to drone up. Spores are on the way to help deal with those Banshees. And links, do they catch some Hellions? Oh! 
almost do. Clutch pick up there from Cure. Saves the Hellions, saves the Cyclones. Oh my god, the juggling, the micro. Cure, he preserves his units, he's pushing out. And Dark is now in some trouble. What do we have to defend? We have four queens. Ah, that's, that's pretty good. We have four queens. We have a spore. We have leans and roaches on the way. This third base is vulnerable. It is exposed. But the Hellions turn back around. Okay, okay. We're only applying pressure with the Banshee and the Cyclones. Here we go. We have Cyclones towards the natural. Banshee towards that third. Queens are a little bit distracted by the Banshee. Ling's going for a counterattack. Cyclones are dropped. Oh, bit of miscontrol there as Cure. He leaves one of the Cyclones behind. Does go down. The Banshee has gotten a lot of damage though. Now we're up to two. We do have Cloak. We don't have Detection. We have the Spore though. As we almost get a Banshee. And the Spore slowly pushing forward. I believe we have a Transfuse. We barely keep the Hatchery alive. Dark does hold. Whew. And uh, now we need to take a moment here to take stock. Uh, the Banshee is still being active, of course, but behind this cure, he's on 28 workers. He's working on a third CC, so he's trying to macro out of this. Meanwhile, Dark is on 42 drones on three bases and is working towards his lair. I want to give the edge to Dark here slightly, at least until Cure gets his third base. As he's still on two bases. Orbital just now starting. The Banshees have potential. We have three Banshees on the map. Two of them, they're going for that natural base. And we can wreak havoc. We get two Banshees, they one shot a drone. We get four drone kills and back off. Very nicely done. And even though Dark has a worker lead, Cure makes up for that with mules. Why Cure is still holding his own. We're going for a Spire. Okay. I mean, this game is wild. We're going for a lot of twists, a lot of turns, going into muters. I mean, this is going to be a good way to, sh to shut down, to clean up these Banshees. Would, would be a good way to shut them down. But the Spire is still in production. Banshees, they get into the main. Another drone. Ooh, and she does fall. Bit of an overextension there by Cure. He's going for the third. No turrets in position. There's no reason for turrets. We have not scattered the tech. We don't know what's going on. And here we go. Six meters, seven meters on the way. Seven meters. That is enough to one shot an SCV. Can one shot workers. But as we're getting to muter play, Cure is still being active on the map. We have Banshees on the left, we have Hellions on the right, we have a drop coming into support. Can a Dark defend? Can he keep up? There we go, Queens are in position. They zone away the Banshees. Drop towards the main is caught by the, by the Muters. Somewhat caught here, do we get a Muter? It looks like we will get one. Cyclone goes down. Medivac gets shut down as well, but this is probably a good thing for Cure. Yes, he does, lose, he does lose a drop, but it wasn't the most committed of drops, and more importantly, turrets. More importantly, Cure, he has time to respond. Turrets are being thrown down in every single mineral line. He now knows about the muters, they're no longer a surprise. And Cure should not lose workers. Shouldn't lose too many. Is prepared. They do manage to get an SCV here. They force a cancel on the depot. You can see Marines getting in position. Sending back those meters. And once again, Tark just not able to commit. He is at least keeping Cure pinned back home. He is at least keeping him busy behind this. We have plus one range on the way, plus one carapace. We're committing here with Roach Ravager, not Ling Bane. As 
we are down to six meters and oh, we take a lot of hits on one of them we have to be careful we rotate back around We apply pressure to the eBay, but we should be able to save it as Dark is amassing his Roach Ravager army towards the left hand side. These tanks are looking a bit exposed. We have Hellbats. Files, they will connect. One tank goes down. We get a second. We get the Banshees. Oh, they stood in the Biles. Not like this. As those are some valuable piles there from Dark. A very high value. Getting the Banshees and the tanks. Muse, they rotate around. Dark getting ready for another dive. These tanks are a little bit too far back. We can actually lay siege on the third base. We're out of range of the tanks. We deny the third. Dark amassing an army. Getting ready to push in towards the right-hand side. Turret went down. Mutas are going in. There is no turrets. But there are marines. And roaches, they're coming for the riots from the left as well. We're trying to collapse on this. There are a lot of Marines, though. And Cure, he collapses on top of those Ravagers, forcing Dark back. Cure holds. Again, he was in position. Had plenty of Marines here at both entrances. And Dark, he bleeds out quite a bit. He is still maxed, though. We just get into the main. And can we get on top of those tanks? It looks like one more tank goes down. Does get wild. But the Marines are now the problem. Good target firing out of Curie. Does get two more Ravagers. Does get two more Ravagers. As going pure Roach Ravager against Bio, it's it's quite difficult to pull off. You have to be very careful, especially regarding the tank count. And the tank positioning. 2-2 two -two is done for Cure. Muta's being a nuisance, but they are going to be forced back. Ooh, a Muta goes down. Down to five. Dark remaxing. I'm a little bit concerned that we don't have any infestation pits. No infestors, no fungals. Just pure Roach Ravager. We're trying to push in once again. We take down another tank. The Biles. The Curie's ready to just dive on this army to cut it off. At the same time, Dark once again going for the Ebays. They have been repaired. Kira trying to take the center base. Oh, I say center base. That's the main, by the way. Does pick up the main. Is going to get balled down. We can't afford to lose it. As the mutants say, going for the armory. We get another tank. Do you pick up another tank? The armory is on fire. Oof. Dark desperately does want to shut it down. Gets another tank as well. The bio army is getting overseen, but we get on top of the Ravagers. Good pickups there by Cure. Mutas, they do get the armory. Plus three does start in time. Plus three attack. Plus three armor is going to be delayed until we rebuild that armory. So not a bad pickup there by Dark. As Cure is pushing out, Dark, he moves in. Gets another tank. Cure is out of position. SCVs are going down. Yeah, Curie's racing back home. And the CC. Ooh, does take a lot of damage. Can we get a kill? One more mile. One more and it does go down. Curie, he has to commit. The Biles, they do force him back over and over again. Reinforces are coming in as well. And Curie, he's running out of Marines. Running out of Bio. But even some of the medevacs were Biled. Muta's still being a nuisance in the main base. Cure, he gets knocked down to two bases. He has the natural, and he has this forward base. Two base economy. And Cure is getting picked apart. Over and over again. There were some good moments for Cure, specifically when Dark tried to push in from multiple angles. When Dark was pushing in through both ramps. But alas, he has picked Cure apart. Left and right, tank after tank, base after base. And he has done a GG, gets called Dark, he overwhelms, and Dark takes game number one. GG. <laughs>
Oh, a very, very tense game there. Honestly, I was so impressed by how much damage Dark dealt with his mutas. Like, the mutas themselves didn't kill too many workers. They didn't specifically kill too much, but they were keeping Cure busy. They were constantly just being a thorn in his side, forcing him to commit supply here to pulling back, did delay him in more ways than one. And it was only seven mutas, and they, like, we never built any more. Like, they persisted throughout the entire game. On top of that, Dark, it was so on a knife's edge. If Dark had overextended one too many times, then it would trigger a counterattack. And Dark could die then and there. Again, he had to be very careful with how and when he pushed him with his roaches. And did eventually overwhelm. GG. GG, well played. Dark takes game number one. And now we're getting into game number two. Dos. Let's go. On top of that, to be fair, this was a very chaotic game. Remember, it started off with cure going for a rax factory opener which is ne which is never seen by the way like that was a wild build out of cure uh forced into one base play as his cc was cancelled in the follow-up he was able to do a lot of damage with his banshees but he did not scout the spire despite that he was able to get ready for it like there was there was a lot of there was a lot going on in that game it was uh it was very weird <laughs> it was not standard <laughs> Not a standard game from either player, but here we go. We're getting into game number two and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Host Youth. We have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Liquid. Down in the series, looking to bounce back. It is Kyor. And spawning in the top right-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Zerg player, the Blue Zerg, representing Talon Esports. Leading the series one to zero, it is dark. Going for a hatch first this time. Going for a hatch first. Interesting expansion pattern. Um, when it comes to post youth, for those that are curious, we have a free pocket base here in the main, and it is a hybrid base with gold minerals and regular minerals as well. So it's a very valuable base here and very secure in two bases, just because you have one entry point, one ramp leading into the high ground. So a very secure setup. We have seen some Zerg players avoid this center, this um, this main base, and actually go for a natural, natural, and take the gold as their third. Because on top of this hybrid base, there's also a gold base as well, just outside that you can take as a third or as a fourth or as a fifth, depending on how greedy you want to be. So we have seen some players be quite adventurous, not just Zerg players, but Terrans and Protoss trying to rush into this gold a lot faster. We can see, though, that Dark is going for a much more standard exp expansion pattern. Going gasless. Going for a fast third. Let's go. Very greedy build here out of Dark. What I'm referring to, no gases. No gases were taken. It was a hatch, pool, hatch opener. This does mean that link speed is delayed quite heavily. So there's no link speed here for Dark. We're going to be defending with queens and slow links for now. Because link speed is going to be so delayed, because gases are so late, this usually means that Dark goes into roaches. Because it's like, why invest into link speed so late at this point? We may as well just skip it, go into a roach war, and go into roach production instead. That's usually how Dark plays this out. But again, a very greedy build. Behind this, speaking of, oh my god! Speaking of greed, this is basically the new Radister Station. If you remember, on Radister Station, it was very common to go for these wild builds. That is a third TC before Factory. It, technically before Starport, but before Factory is wild into a second Rax as well. So it's a game of cutting corners. It's greed versus greed. We saw something very similar on Radister Station because of its own safe setup on three bases. Very similar here on Post Youth as well. So it's going to be 3cc into a 3 racks here from Cure. Dark going for... Oh my god! Going for a fourth hatchery before gas! Like, three hatch before gas. I mean, that's that's like a greedy build that we've seen from Dark before. Four hatch before gas. This I have not seen. Even on Raz's Station, I have not seen Dark do this. That is crazy! But Dark, he saw the build. It makes sense. Dark, he saw the third CC, so he knows how greedy Cure is being. So he doubles down. He raises greed with greed, Poppy. Let's go. So to counteract the third CC timing of Cure, that's why Dark threw down the fourth. And uh, yeah, let's go. It's just pure queens and drones. Zero lings, zero tech whatsoever. And now that we're going into our gases, remember, this should be for roaches. And there it is. There's that roach ward. 
So uh, if you're a Zerg player out there, if you're looking to mimic this kind of style or go gasless, again, usually you don't want to waste your time with Link Speed. Not worth it at this point. Ooh, as the Reaper goes down, some miscontrol at a cure. To stay within range, does get shut down. Cure looking at his vision. He did not see the fourth. Ooh, Cure. If he had kept that Reaper alive, most likely he would have rotated around. He would have seen. But he doesn't know. Cure, he hasn't seen the fourth, and he didn't see the lack of gases. So Cure doesn't know how greedy Dark is. Meanwhile, Dark knows exactly how greedy Cure has been. So uh, Cure is lacking some crucial information there. Behind this, setting up for his 3-1-1. Going for his add-on swap. Cure, he's basically stuck at home, and he's going for a stim timing. We're going for an add-on swap for double medevacs. This should be hitting with stim. So in another minute or so, Cure can finally be active. But remember, because of Cure's build, no Hellions. Zero Hellion harass, zero drop play. This is going to be a later push, and that's why Dark can get away with a fourth hatchery like this. It's because of Dark, sorry, it's because of Cure's own, like, cut corners that Dark can get away with it. Going for a fifth? Oh my god! He's not stopping! Someone stop this man! He's crazy! And here we go, Cure is now pushing, Stim is done in 10 seconds, and we are hitting a little bit before that, even before the Metamax kick in. He's going for the goal base. I'm loving this from Cure. Moves out ahead of time. Without even his own Metamax, he does nice. The mining does focus on the Roaches, but the Queens have arrived. Do we have a Transfuse? We do not. Good target firing at a Cure. He gets four drones. He does get damage done. Remember, if he had hit now with these Metamax, then we would have had plenty of Roaches and Queens to defend. We would not have gotten any drone kills. So it was a risky move at a Cure. Does pay off. Does get a couple of drones. But now Dark, he's well underway with Roach production. He's able to keep up. The pressure is on Cure. The pressure is on. Behind this, ooh, we delayed the third and fourth medevac. So we're only active with these two drops for now. Or well, this is these two medevacs. Okay, just now getting into the third and fourth. So because of that, Dark, he's free to drone. Like, he only has to keep up with one harassing force. Which is fine. Oh, the Roach is saved. Morphed into a Ravager just in time. And Dark, he does drone up to 65. That is three base saturation. To be fair, this 65 worker count is more than that because of the gold base. And we're going for essentially a three base all in. We're cutting workers here and now. We're making nothing but Roaches and Ravagers. We have Link Speed on the way. 1-1 one, one as well. Dark, he's focusing on maxing out. You can see Dark skyrocket ahead in supply. This is committed, though. Bearing in mind that Dark is going to hit a very strong timing here with 200 supply with Roach Ravager. And if he doesn't get economic damage done, if he doesn't at least reset the tank count, if he doesn't deny the third, then Q will get ahead. So we're putting a lot on the line here. A risky maneuver out of Dark. He is about to max out. It's supply block, though. But there we go. 200 supplies kicking in. We're going for a drop into the main. Dark is in position, mostly. Oh, as he moves out just at the wrong moment. Does move back in. We do manage to get five, six drones in the blink of an eye. Very nicely done. Very good target firing at a cure. But here comes the all in. Here comes the push. Dark cutting workers at 59. And he's maxed out. Now, this is a pretty good tank line, but they are bunched up. The tanks, they bunch up the miles. They're going to get one. They're going to get ooh, barely two tanks. And we're breaking through from behind. We're getting on top of this. We get us around. And Darky snowballing out of control. He gets every single tank. And Darky has done it. He breaks the third base. And GG gets called. Dark takes a 2-0 lead in this series. GG. That was a wild game. <laughs> that was a wild game. GG, well played. A hyper greedy build out of Dark. But remember, Dark, he got away with that greed because of the greed of Cure as well. Or I should say, because Dark scouted the greed of Cure, specifically. Uh, because Dark saw the timing of the third TC, he knew what he could get away with. He could get away with 
the goal base the fourth before any gases were taken so uh yeah really really greedy build there out of dark he got away with it um was able to then cut workers at 65 which is three base saturation and then go for a max out go for a century a three base all in but that three base all in hit faster than normal because of the gold and because of the opener so that it, that did hit harder and faster than a normal than a normal max out there from dark from a normal three base all in and it did catch cure unprepared unawares or i mean he was trying his best to prepare in time but again just because of how the game played out it hits so hard there there was very little that cure could have done um outside of maybe forcing the army back if he was maybe a little bit more active maybe he forces dark back but uh, he was still ready for it anyway even with the drop play gg and now we're getting into game number three Here we go, and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Amphion, we have our South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, down in this series. He's on match point, one more loss, and it's over. It will be the end of the tournament, the end of the series. We have to fight back here and now. Give him your energy, give him your support to force an extended series. It is Cure. And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Zerg player, the Blue Zerg, representing Talon Esports. One game away from winning this entire tournament, from becoming our champion this week, and from clean sweeping his opponent. Going for a pool first, it is Dark. Let's go. We're loading into Amphion. Amphion, an interesting map, has a very interesting kind of base layout as well there are these bases on the left hand side which you can gain access to if you do mine through these mineral patches um these bases can be quite secure here on the right hand side some of these center bases are a lot more wide open as well or at least can be opened up but we have yet to experience a standard game if you were here for game one and game two again still no standard game between these players it's been a wild series so far and we'll see what dark can get done with this pool first now, it's going to be a pool, hatch, gas opener. This should be for six links. We're banking up the, the larva. There it is. Six links are on the way. The goal here is to disrupt this build, is to delay this CC. As the CC is about to be thrown down. The goal as well here is for Dark to avoid the Reaper. And the Reaper should be going through the center of the map um, just because of these Reaper cliffs, which means Dark going through the right-hand side will go unscouted. So this is a pretty good map for Link, for a pool first, to be honest. Just because the Reaper the Reaper path is not the same as the unit path, so you're just going to be able to naturally avoid it anyway. But the Reaper will get across the map a lot faster. So the Reaper is going to be slipping in. Dark is going to have to defend with purely Queen. The base is spotted, and we're racing back here. And we do notice the hatchery is late. It's a pool first. Lings have arrived. The wall is open. Boys are being pulled. We do deny a lot of mining time here in the main base. And we should not kill a worker. But this CC is heavily delayed. So a delayed natural. And what is this? Six, sorry, seven SCVs off the mineral line. And they're still chasing, by the way. And finally, we can go back to mining. But uh, that is a lot of economic damage dealt. And from here, Dark can freely get into his own Link Speed drone up. With Link Speed on the way, looks like we're not going into Roaches. Looks like we could see some Link main action for the first time this series. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> I did see a comment in the chat, um, name a better duo. Oh, as it looks like, oh, who was that? I didn't get to see, uh, but someone was having some latency issues there. Was it Dark? Um. I didn't see, it was a short name. I didn't get to see who it was. But uh, hopefully things clear up. Um, checking on our end, we're fine. Our latency, our connection is fine. But uh, hopefully everything is okay. If we do experience a bit of latency in game, then uh, we will most likely pause until things clear up. Like now is not the time for a, for a lag to influence the, the state of a game. As Dark is working towards his third, and we're settling on him. 
Uh, but what I was gonna say is that um, Dark and Rich is even more iconic duo, right? Like Dark, he is a Roach boy. He loves his Roach play, but he doesn't just have to play Roaches. He can play Ling Bane. He's quite good at it as well. As he is amassing a lot of Lings. A lot of Lings are amassing. We're going for our third TC. And we are pushing, by the way. Dark cutting workers are looting at 32. We're going for a Ling Flood. We're moving out with a Ling Flood here. The natural base is wide open. What do we have to defend? How many how many Hellions? Zero. No shot. Two Hellions, they're just now on the way. We do deny mining here at the natural. We're going for the depot. Hellions, they have arrived, thankfully. With the help of these Hellions, we should, we should force back the army. Dark doesn't get too much damage done. He does delay mining, at least. And Kira, I wonder if he wants to expand here towards the north. Maybe looking for it. There we go. Getting into his add-on swap, going into Cloak Banshee. But again, a really weird opener out of Kira. He went Cyclone first into a drop before Hellion Banshee. So it's, yeah, a very quirky build here out of Cure. Uh, it's not going to pay off. But what happened here is basically Cure, he delayed his own Banshee production and his Hellion production in favor of this drop. This drop doesn't get a lot done, though. The drop is designed to hunt down Overlords. And we may be able to get one. Overlord is under threat. And it's going to be close. Up. Oh! We do manage to get one Overlord. Very nice pickup. Again, that is the purpose of this opener. As Dark is getting to his fourth. We do have Carapace on the way. Double Eva Chamber, double upgrades. We're going to be delaying our mainly production and mainly speed in favor of upgrades. So a very greedy opener here out of Dark, but he's going to be able to get away with it. Basically, what's happening here is that Dark, he delayed his lair, which means that Bailing's speed is delayed in favor of upgrades. As Cure is playing Mech, no shot. Two more factories on the way. Mech is on the horizon. Remember at the start of the series, I spoke about how Cure, he does dabble in Mech. He doesn't embrace it as much as Gumiho, but he does sprinkle it in every now and then. And there it is here in game three. Mech is being whipped out for the first time. Oh boy. Okay. And to be fair, against Ling Bane, Mech can do well. As Cure, he does move in with a massive amount of Hellions. Dark going for the surround. Oh, he does collapse on these Hellions. He does get surrounded. Big catch here. Big pick off. Cure bleeding out a lot. That surround should not have happened. Behind this, the Banshees also get caught out, so the Queens rotate over. At least Cure trades with the Lings, but he was hoping for more damage. He was hoping to break into a mineral line. It does not work. Does not happen. Double Armory on the way. Speed as well for the Banshees. Again, this is, looks like a Mass Banshee variation of Battle Mech. I say Mass Banshee. Basically, we're not going to be stopping Banshee production. We're going to be getting up to like five or six Banshees to harass, to support. Focusing on Hellion and Cyclone. As now Dark is about to confirm. He sees all the Hellions. He sees the lack of Marines. Gets us around though. Good positioning here for Dark. There's no way out of this. The Hellions, a lot of them are going down. Ooh. We do bleed out quite a bit. Getting another Hellion towards the end. And now Dark knows it's back. Now Dark is aware. Oh, there is a detection. Drones are going down. Very nice damage dealt here by these Banshees. Very nicely done. Do you manage to get some drones? Oh, as a response, Dark is going Ling Bane Hydra. I mean, this makes sense. We already invested into plus one melee, right? We already invested into, into these melee upgrades, into this Ling Bane upgrades. So transitioning to Roaches is going to be difficult. Ling Bane Hydra can do okay. And we want to go into high just because of the Banshees. Remember, the Banshee count is quite high. We need some anti-air. The Ling Bane Hydra is going to be a fragile composition. And Cure is pushing in. Does push in. Banley's there was on board. They connect with the, with the Hellbats at least. Hellbats are going down. But the Cyclones survive. They focus down the detection. And the Banshees, they can wreak havoc. But Lings, they get a surround. Yeah, good position there. Good surround by Dark. Cleans up every single Cyclone. Do 
we have an overseer? We do. It's racing back home. Bench is like headed for the main base. Hydro production has commenced. Hydro den is spotted. Hydro den is scouted. The cure is forced back. It's forced to turn around. Getting into additional factories. This third base is up and running, working towards the fourth. His fourth base is on the way. Now, Dark has been stuck at home because of his... Uh, because he's been bleeding out a lot of links to the Hellions. Has to rebuild his army. Has to remax. He's on a decent drone count on 78 workers. Once again, trying to cut off those Hellions. Meanwhile, Ling's going for a run by, but they run into Blue Flame Hellions. Ling's get roasted. Again, because the Blue Flame Hellions are good against Light Units, they're good against Ling Bane and Hydra, it's quite difficult to make this composition work. It's not going to be easy for Dark. As the Banshees, they find a base. They get a lot of damage done as well. Hydra speed is not done, by the way. Oh, that is brutal. It's still in production. Yeah, we can't keep up with the Banshees. And honestly, Cure is doing well. Cure is doing well. Basically going mass Hellion Banshee. Who needs Cyclones? Not anymore. Not after the nerf. Especially against this. If there, were, if there were Roaches, it's a different story. But there are no Roaches. And the Lings, they're getting roasted. The Lings go down. We get on top of the Hydras. And Curie snowballing out of control. He's breaking through. A very efficient trade here. The Hellions are going down. But you can see Dark plummet in supply. And because of that, any kind of counterattack that Dark wants to go for, it's it's not going to be possible. Not anytime soon. Again, you can see the trade here. 17 Hellions for 41 Links and 8 Hydras. A much more efficient trade there by Cure. And now we're getting to tanks. The tank army is amassing. Dark is stuck at home. Cure takes the supply lead. Now, Vipers are going to be the MVPs here. We have we need to rely on these Vipers. Whether it's Blinding Clouds or Abductions, it is the only way for Dark to engage with this line of tanks. The only way currently. Uh, Ultras will help, but we scan the main base. We see the Hive, the Vipers, and the Ultra Cavern as well. Cure sees everything. That should trigger Ghosts. The ideal late game of Mech, or of Terran in general, is Mech Ghost. So we'll see how Cure will respond, whether he goes into Ghost now or later on down the line. So let's find a base at the same time. Blue Flame Hellion run by. Runs into something Bane. Good trades here from Cure. Able to kite back. Oh, the hatchery is going to be cancelled. And we do shut down some of the Hellions at least. Meanwhile, a Spire is on the way. Interesting. Okay. I'm liking the Spire. There are no Thors. This is a lot of units that don't shoot up. How many tanks? 16. 16 tanks, 11 Hellions, 2 Vikings. A Muta Switch could work wonders. And Dark, he has a bank. He can invest. He can make, what, 12, 13 Mutas. But before he can make them, Cure is pushing. Spire is just now finishing, but alas, can we make use of it? Here he's moving out with his death ball of an army. And Dark, he has maxed out. He's going for a greater Spire instead. But can Dark hold? We have three Vipers. We're coming in. Blinding Clouds are thrown down. Decent Blinding Clouds, but the Vipers are falling. And can we break through? It's close to Ling's A. Barely break through the first line of defense, but there's a second line of tanks. And Cure, he's breaking through. Not enough Ling's. And the Hydras are falling. And Cure, he holds the line. Now we're mixing in some Thors, Hellions, more tanks. Ultras are on the way, that will help. But I'm pretty sure the Vipers were shut down. Yeah, every single Viper fell in that fight. This Viking, this this one Viking, four kills. 
I'm pretty sure that's all the Vipers. It's one MVP Viking. The Viper count is reset. Uh, Hellions, they bust into a mineral line and there's nothing here to stop them. Drones are falling left and right. We try to burrow, but we have a scan. Every single drone goes down. Dark going for a big link counterattack instead. And we're going to be able to force back at least some of the army. There's that Ghost Academy that we spoke about to get into Tank Ghost. Ghosts are on the way. Raxes are finishing. This is the ideal late game army for Cure. And Dark, he just can't keep up. Not anymore. It's been too much. Like, the only thing that, that can, like, keep Dark alive here is, like, Ultras, Vipers, and Broodlords, but that's what the Ghosts are for. And they're coming. Ling's getting more damage done. We're buying time. The Ultra Count is amassing. Dark, he did see, of course, the Ghost Academy and the Raxes, so he knows that Ghosts are on the way. As hell is they get into the Mineral Line once again. Oof. It's gonna get cleaned up. How many ultras do we have? We have nine ultras, soon to be twelve. I would like this a lot more if we had some vipers to support. Like ultras, the, their purpose here is to tank tank shots, is to be able to take a couple of hits to the face, collapse on the army. But that's so many tanks. Yeah, vipers would be ideal. To allow these ultras to actually close the distance. Especially with ghosts in the mix. Instead we're going for Neural. So it looks like Darky is thinking of going into Infester. That is an alternate way to, to go about this. You know, fungal the ghosts and collapse on top of them, sure. But the ghosts, they're going to be behind this beefy mech army. Like, these ghosts, they're so safe. Ultras from behind. We're setting up a surround. Or even a counterattack. Oh, just a hit the fourth. And they're going for the fifth as well. They get into the mineral line. SCVs are going down. And they force back the army. They're going for the planetary as well. The planetary oh, should fall. Ah, but GG gets called. Yeah, there's just nothing else here for Dark. And Cure will take the game. We'll fight back in this series with Mech. Let's go. GG, that's all that Dark had, and yes, Dark, he was killing SCVs, but he was not touching the army. That's the thing, he was throwing away Ultras for workers, not for the army, and... Dark, he knew that the writing was on the wall. He knew that it was just too much of a loss, too much of a deficit, and Kira, he's bouncing back. Let's go, puppy, let's go. Let us go. With that Kira, the comeback has begun. It has begun. And again, Dark was just in a really rough position. He didn't realize it was Mech until he was already invested into Ling Bane. So he tried to transition into Ling Bane Hydra. But we saw that as soon as Cure realized what was happening, he just stopped making Cyclones, went into mass Blue Flame Hellion, and he was just trading so well, so efficiently, that they would transition into his tanks into the late game. And Cure could not be stopped, could not be slowed down. And now we find ourselves... In a series, we have a back and forth. Let's go. Let's go. As spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the South Korean Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Team Liquid. Putting a point on the board, fighting back. Can he force the ace match? It is Cure. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have as opponent, we have the South Korean Zerg player. The Blue Zerg, representing Talon Esports, still one game away from becoming this week's champion. He needs to fight back here and now, and he can take it. It is dark. See in the chat, Snipes Davis here, only to then back up with the Banshees. He's so hesitant. I remember the moment you're talking about. Um, there was a moment when the Cyclone barely sniped the Overseer, and the Banshees, they skirted their way into the main, but they didn't commit. I do think that he probably could have been a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more assertive with his Banshees at the time. But regardless, he played it safe. That's what I will say. Did play it very safe and sound, and we saw that Cure was able to just be the more efficient player. Was able to snowball out of control. Overall, very good decision-making from Cure. 
really good execution there when it comes to responding to what he was what he was up against. When it comes to his overall army composition, did play it out well. Once again, Dark going for a pull first. It is going to be a pull first build. Uh, this time we've not banked up Larva, so we're not going into six links. Interesting, and we see why it is not for those initial six links. It is for a fast Roach War. Okay, so there's going to be a Roach Rush here from Dark. He has two links. Now the purpose, the goal of these two links is to force an overreaction and to force Cure to turn around with his Reaper. If Cure does not scout the Roaches, then he could be caught with his pants down. So we'll see if Dark can pull this off. Lings are moving out. Likewise, so is the Reaper. And it looks like the Reaper is not going to come across the Lings. The Overlord did spot the Reaper path. So Dark, he does barely avoid that Reaper. And he's slipping in towards that natural. Meanwhile, Curie's getting across the map. And he will get eyes on the hatchery. Does see that it's not done. He now knows it's a pull first. And back at home, the Lings, they do delay the expansion. Curie's shaking the throat. Does he go into the main? Does he go in? Curie, he sees his only two lings. He does not turn around with the Hellion. Sorry, with the Reaper. Very, very wise choice here from Cure. Keeps the Reaper across him. He spots the Roaches. Big Scout. He sees what's going on. He's aware. He's getting ready. Bunker is on the way on the high ground. So Cure, he's going to finish the CC. It's going to lift. He's going to give up on the natural. And he will defend that main. And Dark is droning. Dark behind this, he's droning on up. This initial Roach push, it's gonna del it's gonna delay the expansion, yes, but it shouldn't do much more. Should not do more than that. So there we go, the Roach Ravager has arrived does get across the map. Again, we're going to be able to deny some mining here. We do force a lift. Oh, we do bleed out the Reaper, though. We're up there from Cure. Bleeds out a Reaper. The Hellion is... Sorry, the Cyclone as well. Dancing with Death. We have to be very careful with our control. But overall, Cure is safe and will eventually be able to expand. Right now, the goal for Dark is to delay this expansion for as long as possible. Just delay and contain Cure to one base for as long as he can. Behind this, Dark is droning up as quickly as possible. Droning his heart out. Files. Oh, oh my god, they connect with the Cyclone. Again, Cure slipping up a little bit there. Depots are going down, both of them even. Pretty good damage here from Dark. Does supply the Cure. Oh, that's a big supply block. Three Deepers are on the way. Aye, aye, aye. Third CC's in production. But Dark, he's getting more than he should have here. Much more behind this. We have our third base on location. We're droning, taking our gases as well at the natural base. Banshee has arrived, and now we force Dark back. Cure can finally re-expand, and we can get into our game. The game will progress, but uh, Cure has some catching up to do. When it comes to his saturation, thankfully he's got plenty of mules. Thankfully he's already got his third CC in production, and we'll see what these banshees what these banshees can get done. Managed to get a couple of roaches back at home. How many queens? We have four queens in between our bases. We have a spore at the natural, spore in the main. No spore at the third, but it just now starts up. Dark, he should be safe against these banshees. Should be. As a reminder, last game, the banshees of Cure did quite a lot of damage. They were able to pick Dark apart. But of course, that was also when, because he had invested heavily into his banshees, into specifically hyperfight rotors, into banshee speed. That is not the case this time, as Cure is going into Bio, not into Mech. So a very different playstyle this time out of Cure. He's poking with his Banshees. He can watch on drones. But the spores are done. Files. Ooh, do connect! Dark! <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I do connect here with these Banshees, so Cure has to be that much more careful. Thankfully, they're still alive. 
But the Banshees are forced back. And behind this, Curie's getting his third. Taking his third base, building up here on a fire tank. And we'll see what kind of direction Dark goes in as we are going into a fast infestation pit. Interesting. Now with this fast pit, we could just go for a fast hive. We could go into infestor production. I'm not feeling swarm host here unless it was mech. But of course, uh, Dark should soon be aware that mech is not the not the composition of choice. Yeah, we're getting into plus one melee. It looks like this should be for a fast hive and this should be for fast adrenal. It was a Banshee's Day. Do force a cancel. Good pick up. They cancel the fourth. There it is. Hive is on the way. Again, with this, we can get into Fast Adrenal. Into just to boost up the output here of the Ling Bane. We are still investing into Roach Speed. That is just going to be for a supportive unit. Roaches are going to be morphed into Ravagers. And they can shut down tank pushes. Speaking of, we are building up that tank out. as Cure is going to be settling here on three bases. And he's getting his fourth on location. I do like this. I do think that um, because of the openers, because of the early game, Cure he has to take some risks. And uh, taking this fast fourth is part of that. Likewise, Dark double expanding, getting his fourth and his fifth at the same time. And Cure is taking a more passive approach. Even though he was being active with his Banshees, he is not active with his drop play. Sim is done. He has a medevac. He has two. But he's still been chilling back at home, expecting, I'm sure, aggression from Dark. And now we can finally move out with a double drop. Kira can finally be active, and he has to do the best he can to keep this creep at bay, to deny bases if at all possible. Does get eyes on the fourth, sees the saturation. And Kira, he may come across the fifth as well. But Dark is in position. Rich. It's round, he does trade well against the Lings, and the Metarax, they will spot the fifth hatchery. Cure is aware. There is Vipers are on the way. Ultra Cavern alongside this. Oh my god, okay. Now we have our answer as to the purpose of that hive. We're rushing into Ultras. Rushing into Ultras, rushing into Viper Tech. Dark getting away with quite a lot there. Adrenal not going to be on the way. But Cure is pushing. He sees that fifth. He wants it. I mean, the creep is kept back. So not going to be a bad engage here from Cure. Dark, he's ready to deal with the double drop. He's going for a sick patchery. Ah, Dark. Most of his army is out of position. We will shut down the drop. But this base will fall. There's no saving it. We deny Overlord Speed. As a kill in the hatchery. And Dark immediately goes for a counterattack. Mind shot gets faded out. We get on top of the tank. When this Ling Rabe, it's going to get so much done. Now it's going to be Cure's turn to be out of position. Gets into the middle line. SCVs are falling. We even force a friendly fire. You get eight SCVs, but at the same time, the sixth hatchery was denied. It was cancelled. So overall, pretty good from Cure. I want to favor Cure here. He kills two bases. Well, kills one, cancels another. At the same time, this Ling Rambai does get eight SCVs, but that's acceptable losses. A single digit amount of workers. Minimal losses for Cure. And now we can push out once again. And he has retained most of his tanks. Only one tank went down. And Cure, he should deny this base for a second time. There we go. It does force a cancel. Towards the north, we have another drop. Dark is in position to at least save his fifth. We see Dark getting into 3-3. Adrenal is done at this point. He is pushing in with a handful of Ultras. The Vipers have arrived as well. Uh, Cure, nowhere he needs to be. 
His tanks are then not back at home. He's racing back home as we speak. And Dark, can he break in? Oh, the Biles. Ooh, they do connect. Biles are connected to the Marines. The links are going down. The tanks are exposed. And can we catch them? The tanks, they will go the long way back around. But they will survive. So my fifth is still being denied. And honestly, Kiri's holding his own. Like, that push didn't really do much. We traded with the army, but we didn't kill too many SCVs. Jump's still being active. Dark is pushing. Tanks are still not back home, by the way. Tanks are not here. Big power bombs here on the medevacs. Link Bane does collapse in. And do we have enough fire? Do we have enough Marines? Good positioning here by Cure. But he's running out of steam, running out of Marines. We're getting into the mineral line. As we deny that third base. Eight, five SCVs go down. We still have an army left over. And do we keep pushing? We go for the tanks. No. The tanks, they do not survive. The three of them get caught out. All three tanks go down. Big pick off there by Dark. And now Cure. Now he's lost something. Rough trade there. Cure bleeding out his widow mines, his tanks. His medevacs are very low because of the power bombs. And he was a denied mining. With that, Dark he already remaxes. Cure, he needs time. He has a good economy. He saves most of his SCVs, that is true. But Cure, he needs time to rebuild. And Dark, he's already remaxed. And he should not allow Cure to gather his horses to rebuild, to breathe. The ultras are pushing on in. 3-3 is finishing up for Dark. And there's no backbone to the army. There's no tanks. There's no winter mines. The ultras are breaking through. And this time we will get the mineral line. Oh, we pick up. Cure. Does save most of the SCVs. But now we can just push towards the natural. Like there's no stopping Dark. Not anymore. Dark, he's broken the defensive line here of Cure. Getting into the middle line. 14 SCVs go down. The Miles. Take down the Lib. They take down Liberator with just amassing reinforcements here. With more Banelings on the way. Oh. A decent mine shots. The Miles. They don't connect with the Metamax, but they take down the Widow Mines. Another Metamax goes down. Dark, he's just not stopping. Meanwhile, he hits the he hits a planetary. Four CCs on the fire, even with the repairs. He's gonna be losing too much. Dark still forcing his way into the main base. As the planetary goes down. GG gets called. Cure has nothing left. And Dark will take the series three to one, becoming this week's Korean StarCraft League champion. GG. GG, well played, Dark. He does it. We had a pretty wild series, though. Again, it wasn't until this final game where we had a more standard back and forth. Um, we had a wild game one. We had an even wilder game number two. The highlight for me was post youth. Post youth was wild with Dark going four hatch before gas against the three CC before factory build of Cure. With Dark maxing out at what, like the sub seven minute mark? It was crazy what happened on post youth what Dark was able to get away with. But then we had a back and forth. Cure flexing his mech, which makes sense. If you were here a couple of days ago, if you were here on Monday, you would have seen ESL Urban Cup Asia, and you would have seen Gumiho versus Dark. And Gumiho did defeat Dark with mech. Three out of four games. It wasn't until the final game when Gumiho finally played Bio. But uh, yeah, Gumiho, he had a lot of different forms of mech. Um, he had battle mech, he had the more banshee heavy style, had a more traditional form of mech as well. Um, was rushing into BCs at one point. Gumiho, likewise, making that mech work here. And again, it can be quite difficult to deal with. It isn't a very common style, which is maybe why uh, some players are less uh, practiced against it. And yeah, it was a way for at least Cure to put a point on the board here, but not enough to bring Dark down. GG. GG, well played, 
Congratulations here to Dark Mike and also to Cure, but Cure did a great job making it here to the finals, was able to hold his own, was able to have a deep run himself, just unable to bring Dark down. And there's no shame in that. Dark is the best Zerg player in all of South Korea, is one of the best Zergs in the world. So again, it's difficult for anyone to really take it to Dark just because of his more aggressive style, unlike any other. You know, I mean, Serral, Raynor, Solar, there's other good Zerg players out there, but Dark is very stylistic. Dark is very stylistic, especially in his ZBT. He likes the roaches, but he likes the roaches. Congratulations. And with that, we are done here for the time being. We're done for now because in how many hours? In two hours time. In two hours time, this channel is going to be live again. The channel is going to be live once again here. And uh, we're going to be live with Sea Duckling Open. With Sea Duckling Open, that is our monthly bronze to diamond tournament. It is open to players of the League of Diamond or below. So, uh, yeah, if you're an amateur player out there, if you want to take part in a tournament, then we got you covered. We do have you covered there. It's uh, just our way to kind of bring the community together here to motivate players to improve, to motivate players to improve and get and get better and uh, strive towards Masters. We also have a tournament for Masters players that is Masters Swan Open. That's going to be later on in the month. It is going to be later on down the line instead. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Um, today is going to be a big day of StarCraft. We don't just have Sea Duckling Open in two hours. We also have WTL. That's going to be, I think, in five hours. Um, yeah, in five hours' time, we have World Team League. And in seven hours' time, we have EPT Spring. ESL Masters Spring. The regionals for Europe and the Americas is in seven hours. So... There's a lot of StarCraft on tonight, a lot of StarCraft going on, a lot of StarCraft to watch. Best of luck, uh, you will not be left bored or you won't be left with anything to watch because there's non-stop StarCraft here over the weekend. Otherwise, thank you so much. Do appreciate the support. If you want to follow us, if you want to support us, then you can do so. You can do so via social media. We can, of course, you can check out our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Discord. We upload to, to uh, we upload to YouTube on a daily basis, so you can follow us there. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. We'll see you guys in two hours for some more StarCraft. Otherwise, send some love and give some give some support to some of the other streamers out there. Um, who is it going to be? Let's see who's streaming right now. Uh. Let's see, we have Practice X, we have uh, Slammer is on the online, Killjoy, who else? Who else is live right now? Who can we raid? Krasian, I was playing Overwatch. Sort of just went live, ah, we know who we're raiding. <laughs> Give some love to Sort of, Sort of, of course, the Swedish Zerg player, did retire for a time, but recently came back, I say recently, like a year ago, he came back to competitive play. And uh, sort of is currently living in Korea. It's currently living in Korea. So give him some love. Give him some support. Give him a chance. He's a great guy. He's a great player. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Until then, hasta luego. Ciao, papi, ciao. Hasta luego. <laughs>